welcome one and all to episode 11 of Titan Tea Time. I'm one of your hosts, Petter, and with me today I have one of my co-hosts, James. Hello! And Steven is not with us for this episode, but we still have uh, two-thirds of the usual cast in this episode. <laughs> so it will just be me and James today. And we are, well, seeing as there was no new chapter coming out this month, and that's a big... Big unusual thing to happen for Hajime Isayama since he's been releasing new chapters every month for I think over 10 years. So, wow, this kind of breaks that streak, but hey, I mean, he deserves some rest if he gets some. I mean, I don't know exactly because I also heard that there's a chance. May well, so I heard today actually, well, today as of us recording this being uh, the 7th of May, I heard that for the next month in June, the magazine that isn't publishing or that isn't releasing uh, an issue this month, which and that, that's the reason why there isn't an, an Attack on Titan chapter, they will ah. release an issue next month. Got it. So that's that's good. That means we will, you know, pretty much 100% get a new Attack on Titan chapter next month. And there was also some information. Now, I, I haven't, like, it, w it was a post in Japanese. I couldn't read it, but I had some friends uh, who could read it, talk about it, and... What I gathered is that maybe this next issue is going to be double-sized. Now, whether that means we'll get two Attack on Titan chapters next month is unsure, like, is uncertain, but there's a chance, so... Whoa. I mean... So, like, he's going... If that's the case, then he's going to a strict schedule here, like... Right, precisely. Know. If that's the case, then Isayama hasn't been resting this month. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, I guess, we'll, I guess we'll see. Two chapters next month, or just one double length chapter next month like something like that would be really nice but yeah so i guess the future looks brighter this month as i said you know been a little bit hard not having a chapter and having not having a new chapter <laughs> to read <laughs> but as uh, as the listeners can probably tell by the uh, title of this episode we are taking a little look back at the marley arc in this month's uh, episode of titan tea time so Without further ado, like, yeah, so James and I, we have reread the Marley arc, uh, being the four volumes, 23 to 26. Uh, the chapters are 91 to 106. Um, maybe, arguably, 105 is the last chapter of the Marley arc, because the, yeah. uh, chapter 106 is kind of... Uh, I, I kind of view it as an epilogue chapter to the Marley arc, sort of. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I can see it. It's kind of like an epilogue slash... Okay, now we're going to go into the next arc kind of right. thing but i could totally mm -hmm. see it as an epilogue right uh so we've uh, recently read those chapters i've actually read all of the marley arc twice since we last <laughs> talked on the titan tea time uh but yeah I, I just love that arc so much it is it is my favorite arc personally uh i don't know like what, what's your like general uh thoughts or opinion on on the marley arc james so i guess when I first read the Marley arc, it was in a time I was binging the what I hadn't read before. And what you have to understand about that is I was doing it on Crunchyroll. And, and I thought at the time Crunchyroll just didn't have access to some of these middle chapters. They just got rid of them. So uh -huh. I was like, I was like, okay, whatever. I'll just, you know, read what I can. And uh, <laughs> I'll try to figure out the blanks later on. Um, but there's like, you know, there's like arcs I totally missed out on. Um, you know, in in, in between stuff. So, it, oh. so I'll, there was some there was some stuff I missed, and so I going see. into the Marley arc, I I mean I I did get to read the um, Return to Shiganshina arc, so you know you know seeing the 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 hidden basement or you know the secret in the basement, mm -hmm. but seeing that I was like, am I missing something here? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> How is this the secret? Or like I was I was very like uh, shell shocked. And then oh, going yeah. into Marley, I, I felt even more shell shocked because now there's <laughs> like this totally different group of people that I mean I, I kind of figured that that was the case because where where did Reiner and Berthold come from? So right. I kind of figured that was the case, but I was really confused why you know people were oppressing other people. You know what? Why why these people are at war and who these new players are? These characters are you know had I seen these characters all like well. Had these characters already appeared in a chapter that I hadn't read before, so it was it was just a it was it was confusing time. Yeah. Since then, yeah. I come to find out that I think it's a the whoever the publisher is is it Kodansha? Yeah. I can't. 
I think What's it's called Ansha or something like that. I, I can't remember the name exactly, but um, I think they just they don't allow at least in the in the West they don't allow some of the middle chapters to be digital. Like once the further chapters go on, because I've tried different manga um. uh, reading sites and they they just the, the whole middle is just gone. You have to you have to buy the volumes in order um. to read them. So and anyway, so. I guess it's just like, hey, funny tidbit there. So if you want to read the <laughs> if you want to read the uh, Marley arc now, you gotta have to buy the volumes. So that's what it ended up ended up doing digitally. I I just paid I for the volumes, but maybe I'll just end up um, buying them physically. But anyway, I don't regret it because the Marley cool. arc is much better the second my second time reading. I understand so much more and. I, I have a greater appreciation for these characters, um, especially Gabby, which I, I kind of already liked at the beginning with, but Gabby, <laughs> we have great appreciation. I can't remember their names. Uh, Ga- <laughs> Gabby, uh, uh, Ma- 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 Magath, Ma- Ma- Magath mm. uh, Reiner, and oh, there was yes. one more. I think, I think it's, I, I think it's Tiber that I was Willie really Tiber. Mm. the Tiber family. Yeah, I think, that, I think I was impressed with him. Just you know, he, he's kind of a minor character, but he still has a big role in oh yeah, paving he's paving a... the way for what's going on right now. Very important character. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, I think I think Marley arc. Um, a, a, another way to put it is, it's a catalyst for a lot of what's happening right now, um, and it kind of foreshadowed a few things um, that we probably didn't fully understand at the time uh oh yes but now looking back it's like wow the isayama knows what he's doing (laughs) he had this planned out (laughs) Uh, anyway so that those are my uh long uh over (laughs) spoken thoughts (laughs) (laughs) all right and i'm really really happy to hear that you found like this new appreciation for the marley arc after having Mm. reread it really happy to hear hear that and uh, it was a very bold move of Isayama to to make the Marley arc the way he did it. Like, you know, the beginning of it, as you pointed out, like, we start focusing on a completely different cast of characters. Well, mostly anyway. Like, Ryan yeah. and Zeke are there. We knew those since before. But, uh, like, for the most part, it's a brand new cast of characters. And it's a complete, like, it's four years in the future and a brand new continent. Like, you know, it's the mm-hmm. big fo- shift of focus. So it's, it's, it was ballsy, I think, uh, for Isayama to do that because I think there would, I think with such a big change, I think there's a risk of turning re- readers off and maybe losing fans. And I, I don't know if he actually did, I, though I wouldn't be surprised if he did uh, mm-hmm. when people started reading the Marley arc being like, what the fuck is this? Right. I think that's uh, where some of the hatred came for Gabby. Not because of what mm. she ended up she ends up doing, but just because like what... Why do why should I care about this little child? I don't get it. Like, where's <laughs> Picasso? Where's Aaron? Um, yeah. And maybe pe- maybe people weren't like that, but I, I could see that being one of the reasons. Uh, mm-hmm. But it, it also reminds me of I don't know if you've ever read Tokyo Ghoul, but Tokyo Ghoul kind of does a similar thing where the the first series ends and then he starts like a, a new series with a new title, and it's like it's like a couple of years or so into the future, but uh-huh. it's like all these brand new characters and. Um, you know, the main characters are a little different too. And it's, it's a little confusing. It kind of, it kind of put off some people at first. I, I think, I think the manga does a, he does a very good job, but I would say that Isayama does a better job in Attack on Titan than I, I forget the, the manga artist's name for Tokyo Ghoul. But I, I feel like, mm. I feel like Isayama did a pretty good job of introducing new characters to the story, making it interesting. But then in the end, kind of, there's a, satisfying introduction to or reintroduction of the of the previous cast by oh, yeah. the end of this arc that it, it you know it they kind of kind of makes it all in, integrate together fairly well absolutely yeah he, he really laid the groundwork so like with the marley arc he like and i think you you mentioned like how he he set it all up to to very like to work to, to, to make the current arc work very very well uh, because mm-hmm. this is like these two arcs, I think. I mean, they go very much hand in hand: the Marley arc and mm-hmm. the current arc, which I, I like to call the current arc the parodies arc. I think the fandom uh, named it the War for Parodies arc, um, but mm-hmm. I, 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 I like to just call it the parodies arc. But anyway, anyway, yeah. um, 
it's very it's like the last third of the story right now and with with those two arcs pretty much like ish mm-hmm. the last la- last third of the story and i think it's the best third <laughs> of of attack and titan yeah i mean it I think it's hard to. I mean, I mean, the Marley like is fantastic, and we got so many good reveals in in the you know, to I guess to be named the par- parody arc, but I, it, it's it's hard. I think it's going to depend on how it ends for me, I, and I have faith that it'll end well, True. and I'm really enjoying it. But you know, if it if it peters down, like, yeah, I don't know. You right. you have so many good moments in previous. Uh, thirds <laughs> as you can say um, but but i guess for i guess for what it is now like right now yeah i i think i could say that totally it it, it uh-huh. is it is the best right and i definitely agree with you also though that if the ending is shit which i mean i don't want to believe that it will be <laughs> no, but if it is no not at all <laughs> if it is then that will of course lower the whole uh-huh. i mean the whole story will be lowered in my mind if that totally. does happen but you know in isayama we trust yeah that's kind of been our motto of the podcast. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so actually, so I, 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 when I reread this uh, arc, the most recent time, I did mm-hmm. uh, take a few notes, or well, it ended up being a little bit more notes than I had originally thought. But it's <laughs> it, it's it's very loose things. So uh, I guess we could use that kind of to make our way through the whole Mario the arc chronologically sort of. Oh, man. And, and if you, if you uh, think of things that you want to add and talk a bit sure. extra about, uh, yeah, just, just mention that. I have my own list. Oh, that that's awesome. But gra- granted, I, I, I don't mean to go through every point or anything like that, but I'm just saying like, I've wrote a lot more than I thought I did. That's great. I, and, I don't and, think and, it's know, probably not as like... much as yours, but. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to keep it short too, but. Gotcha. Uh, the first thing I noted down was how how the Marley arc starts is I think very much mirrors the start of the whole story uh, because the Marley arc starts with Falco waking up or, mm. or kind of like well he he lost his like s- some of his memories from being hit by like some weapon yeah um, good point and he wakes up in a similar way I mean not similar exactly but Aaron also wakes up at the beginning of the story uh, after he had that dream supposedly of the future Mm -hmm. um and uh, and another thing that i thought was funny like besides just two boys waking up uh is also one thing that so falco asks his brother because colt comes up there and like gets him out uh, off off his back uh and he asks his brother uh like why he's dressed that way like because he doesn't understand why they're in like on a battlefield. Like he asks his brother why he's dressed that way, in a similar way that Eren asked Mikasa when her hair got so long. Because uh, he asked her that in the, like the very very beginning of the whole Attack on Titan story. Oh my gosh, I totally I totally forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty interesting. That's that's why she has the short hair now. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, it's just interesting. But I mean, Eren had Wait. probably been dreaming about the future where he saw Mikasa with short hair. Short then, hair, right? And then when she when he saw her there, he was like, "Wait, why is your hair so long?" <laughs> Something about that, real quick. It, there's that point where there's an there's like an eagle or a falcon flying above, and mm-hmm. I think you you mentioned that. I, I think you mentioned this. Maybe you didn't, but mm-hmm. in one of the in one of the recent fairly recent chapters, at least one of the chapters we talked about in the podcast. Yeah. There was an eagle or a falcon of some sort flying overhead. Yeah. Do you remember what I'm talking about? I know exactly what you're talking about, and I did. I did point that out when we talked about chapter 120. I think it was 120. Um, that there's an early, like one of the earlier pages in that chapter, has some birds. Like, but the thing is, like, I've actually since then, I've, because I think when we talked about it back then, I brought mm-hmm. it up thinking that that was the same bird, and it definitely could be, um, that it was like a an, an eagle or a falcon or something like like you said. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now. I'm a little bit more like so the birds we see in chapter 120 are like they're flying in a flock or like in a group. And right. I mean I'm I'm thinking like what if they're just ravens or something like that? Cuz it's like we only see them from the back so it's hard to we don't really see the heads. So I think it's hard to to judge maybe. But I mean But wouldn't I don't know. The, but wouldn't the bird like be completely black if it was a raven? Maybe. Like yeah, that that that's a good point. It definitely I guess I guess whether or not they're the same bird, like because you know this is different islands or different parts of the world, so it would be shocking if they were the same bird. I guess. Hmm. What if like 
there, there, it's just it, it is supposed to mean something but I, I that's like i don't know i don't know what it means like what's the symbolism between a bird flying in the air i don't know i i thought maybe i'd throw that by you and see if you had any sort right of... <laughs> i don't think like right now i don't think i have anything on that i used to have okay. this theory that it was the same bird and that uh that falco because when that when when chapter 120 came out falco had recently mm. eaten um porco mm. and so and, and he his titan was like dematerializing uh like to like or be becoming he, he was becoming human again because he had eaten mm -hmm. porco right so I, I had this this thought that what if he's gonna wake up and the first thing he sees is those birds in the sky like mirroring his in introduction in the marley arc but of course that didn't happen but that that, that was what i thought back then yeah we get to meet Gabby in in this uh, early part of the Mar Marley arc, and she is just a wonderful character. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> but however, based on based on how she was er early on in her in her story, I do understand why she got so disliked by many people in the fandom. Like I can I, really? I understand it. Like I mean I I never thought so myself, but I I don't think. People who hated her back then, I do think they were justified in, in thinking so. Because she is very, f like, she's very full of herself. She's very, uh, and like, she, she, she breaks, like, international war yeah. law. Right, which she does. Is is a pretty shitty thing to do, probably. Although, personally, like, I mean, like, admittedly, I don't know too much about war. I mean, I've never been in a war. I've never experienced war. Well, I mean... You shouldn't be bringing kids but, into the war in the first place. I mean, let's, yeah, no, let's no, for talk, sure. Let's touch on that real quick. That 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 <laughs> also like, and, and this was supposedly a test for the the warrior uh, right. candidates uh, to see like how they would manage there. But but like mm -hmm. but anyway, from, from my point of view, I I I just feel like having laws in war feels kind of silly. Like why? Mm. I, I I don't know. It feels weird to me. Like why well, there would be laws. A different kind of mentality, you know, or like, mm. I I think like you know back in the day you you were you look at like some of those wars like excuse me for using my um, you know American terms like, you know mm. the Revolutionary War, mm -hmm. or you know, uh, even the, even the Civil War to an extent, there was you know they would they kind of like take your turn shooting you know like oh I yeah mean, it, it, part mm. part of that had to do with like reloading or whatnot but True. Th it was it was kind of like a gentleman. A war, if you will, and right. um, it, it was you know all all's fair and love and war. That's how that <laughs> phrase go. And usually it's supposed to mean that you know oh you know war is supposed to be unfair. It's like well I th I think it's supposed to mean that war is probably just about a, about as as fair as love. So anyway, so I I think like that um, th you know that time period it makes sense to have war laws. Mm. Um, whereas nowadays I, I'm not so sure, especially with, you know, airstrikes and terrorist right. attacks and all sorts right, of yeah. and like, weird things. Ever since World War, I don't, I don't actually know if, if it was World War One or Two. I think it was World War Two. Like since that war, there's been like battles in like, uh, populated areas. Yeah. And that's, I feel like if, if, if that's, if, if that becomes a norm in war, then I don't feel like there can be any laws much. Like, actually, actually, I think there's, like, some kind of international military law about, like, you, you're not allowed to kill doctors or something like that. Oh, really? I, oh. At least that's something I heard. I, I, might, I might be wrong about that. Like, don't quote me on it. Um, unless mm -hmm. I'm right, then you may quote me on it. But, um, <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah, let me preface. I'm not <laughs> a historian and, and, or a military expert any, in any means. But... Mm. Um, I do think I do agree with you that I was a bit taken aback, you know, bec you know it is it is it was against like you know kind of the undetermined law or m m maybe they had some sort of treaty that said said some sort of laws like that war laws like that. But hmm. my thing is my thing is that one she's brainwashed yeah. from birth to be this way, and two she's a, she's a kid. Um, trying to impress the adults who don't stop her. Oh yeah, oh yeah. M Magath is totally cool with it. I mean, they kind of, he, she kind of went, head, you know, head first, and probably didn't give them much time to stop. But um, I mean, she she did ask Magath's permission, and he was a little bit hesitant at first, but he did mm -hmm. ultimately give her the the like green. 
Right. Um, and if he didn't know what she was going to do, as soon as she's like cut off out of the trenches, that should have been if you if we want to be realistic here, that should have been the time where they you know he like pulls her down. It's like, oh, well, no, never mind. <laughs> Get back. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. If he definitely didn't want her to go, then um, yeah, for sure. Right. Mm. Uh, but I but I do I like. I love this moment for Gabby. I know it's oh, yeah. it's you know bad for the, the the enemy and you know these are real people as well and that's kind of the beauty of Attack on Titan. You know who's which mm. side is evil. Oh yeah. You know there there really is there, you know each side has their issues. But anyway, I, I like this moment because it shows how strong she is and it's such a it's such a cool cool <laughs> moment. Oh yes. Um, and it proves you know it, it well it shows Gabby's just attitude and and. Um, tenacity, and I and I really, really, really enjoy that about Gabby, and this actually kind of made me like her even more. Like reading this again, I was impressed the first time, but this time I was <laughs> I was I was blown away. Yeah. And something about not just that part, but just how she talked and was interact with everybody. I can de- I can see where people could say that she's full of herself, but I just I think she just has like this sass and she has this confidence. <laughs> yeah. That. I don't know. I, I find I find it kind of endearing. Like it's not. I don't feel like she was um, looking down on anybody per se. Like she knew where her abilities was. She knew where everybody else's abilities was. I mean, they even comment where like, well, you know, your your test scores aren't that great. She's like, you know, what? test scores they don't matter. Like, right? Come on, it's all about mm-hmm. the in, infield battle. And and to me, like, I don't know. I I, I just find that more appealing. Um, mm. And. I guess taking that to the present, like you're right where we are right now, I feel like that kind of sass has disappeared from Gabby. And maybe that's good for those who don't like her per se, because maybe that is the reason why, but there isn't, there just isn't that same drive and that, that same character. And to be fair, she's gone through a lot and oh, yes. had her whole world shaken. <laughs> Literally and figuratively. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> good. Point. Yeah. Good, good catch there. So I, I I understand that, but at the same time I, I kind of wish the old Gabby would still be there in some cases and, and and I hope I hope we see that eventually, mm-hmm. um, but I don't know I mean she may she may end up playing being uh, playing more of a, a sideline role, and maybe Falco will take more more of the spotlight potentially since he has one of the Titans. Right. Yeah. Anyway, I'm so curious those, those about are that. my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and I agree to to a big extent. Like I also I never disliked Gabby. Um, I I probably wasn't like crazy about her at first. Like when uh-huh. I first like the first parts of the Marley arc, but she definitely grew on me during the Marley arc. And like she has been growing for me like constantly ever since. And like today she's like easily in my top ten Attack on Titan characters list. Um, mm, but same. about the breaking the war law, uh, thing that she does mm-hmm. since, since I, I don't know, because I feel like having laws in war, it feels a bit weird. Just mm-hmm. that's what the way I feel about that thing. I, I, mm-hmm. I never, I never like blamed her. Like, or I, 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 I don't think that the things she did was a bad act necessarily, even yeah. if it is technically illegal, I guess. Uh, I, th- I I just feel like in war there shouldn't be anything such as like that. Um, yeah. But I mean, what do yeah. I? Know? I. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. What do we know? We're just <laughs> we're sitting in we're sitting in our rooms, you know, with water and yeah, you know, air conditioning and what. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway, I'll stop. Uh, <laughs> she has just had an amazing character journey, like I throughout agree. her time in the story, and it's it's been a been a treat to to follow along with her uh and you said something about you know she doesn't doesn't have the same drive as she did and that's definitely true like for the most part and that's because like she because of her having been you know raised in the society she was in uh mm-hmm. it was very logical or it was it made sense very much for her to have the main mentality she had and to have the drive force that she had to uh prove herself and, and to prove that the eldians in marley were good eldians by mm-hmm. by fighting for Marley and by fighting wa- the devils, by by yeah. wanting to and yeah by wanting to, to death to all of the island devils and you know mm-hmm. so having that drive force when her mentality was that way made a, a lot of sense but after having learned more about the world and that the people inside the walls and the people over the ocean are they are all the same 
it makes sense for that type of dry force to to you know disappear a bit. Yeah. I think. So Yeah, definitely. I mean, hmm. you know, until she finds like a new drive, yeah, I uh, that that makes I get I guess her new drive is kind of stopping Aaron in a way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I I don't know, it's just that intensity is not there as much. Although she did help stop uh Jean from kicking the crap out of Reiner, so I guess that's Oh yeah. That's and something. I mean, she, but she she shot Aaron's head off. <laughs> I, hey, you know, I was so mad about that. <laughs> but um, but that was that was still when she w- she was in her, you know, I mean, she was kind of fighting the the devils inside her, if you will. Right. Um, mm-hmm. You know, trying to come to re- realization that we're all people here. Mm. So and and I and I think that's another reason why people <laughs> dislike Gabby so much. But but as Probably. I as I took a step back and I thought about it, I was like, it makes so much sense for her character. Like, of oh, course yeah. you take that shot. She, you know, mm-hmm. at the at the end of the Marley arc, she's screaming like how much she wants to kill Aaron. Right. Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. You know, it, it makes sense. Yeah. Her shooting him there, I think was a great like climax moment for her. And mm-hmm. ever since that, I mean, I guess, yeah. And also a little bit before it, but especially ever since after that, she has had this great growth with, yeah. uh, with, uh, Kaya and like the blouse family and also with yeah. Falco. It's been it's been very very good. It's been good. Do you mind if we talk about Falco real quick? Then? Absolutely, since, yeah. Go since ahead. You mentioned. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So I feel like Falco is uh, uh, obviously one of the main characters in the Marley arc, but he kind of he's one he's one of those like transition points, if you will. Like he, he he's one who helps Aaron and kind of brings Reiner and Aaron together there. Mm. But he also is he almost kind of represents Aaron in in Marley like. You know, when Aaron was younger, I, I, I think there's parallelism between those two characters, okay. especially how Falco felt kind of like powerless compared to the more skilled uh, Gabby, oh, maybe yeah. similar to how Aaron, Aaron felt uh, not as skilled as Mikasa, although maybe not to the same extent, and maybe, and maybe not just Mikasa, but just the whole squad in general, he had, you know, Aaron was going through some issues there. Right. Yeah. Like definitely, like, as you mentioned in the training days, he definitely had moments like that. But also mm-hmm. in the uprising arc, when he realized kind of that, well, before before he talked to Keith Shadis about and, and 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 like before he came to the realization that he is special because he was born into this world, like mm. before he came to that realization, there was a point in the in the uprising arc where he was like in a very bad place where he's like, there is nothing special about me, and like, why do mm. I have these? powers like because there's there's nothing special about me my like he realized his dad was special but he himself wasn't and and all that like he even he wants historia to eat him in the crystal catacombs you know yeah 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 that was so, so interesting yeah. but but yeah. he got over it and, and you know, with <laughs> yeah of historia and whatnot uh, but yeah that, that's interesting i never actually really saw those those similarities with uh aaron and falco but i i do see it now yeah. that you pointed it out yeah right and and he kind of, they both kind of had that like silent determination, but it it took some like coaxing to get that to get that out. I mean, Aaron, mm. maybe not so much as Aaron, but but definitely with Falco because Reiner was the instigator there, you know, telling him to basically save Gabby, and so they both have that driving force, whatever that that motive is, and you know they're running with it and they're doing their best to meet that goal. Mm. And it's really it's really cool to see with Falco because it's not just like instantaneously he. He passes Gabby, but you know there's just this one time where he beats Gabby in a foot race, yeah, <laughs> or in a in a marathon, whatever they were doing, yeah, and, you yeah. know, and you know he practically won gold. He feels like, but you know he, <laughs> but he realizes like that's not enough to get the armor tightened. But you know, he, he's like, doesn't matter. I will, I will save you. Yeah, and obviously exactly. Gabby's Olivia's to it. But but anyway, it's <laughs> I see all this like growth for Falco, and you know, and, and see kind of that his relationship with Aaron and then that that betrayal. And then we get to now, and I, you you remember when we were talking about the the Coney and and Armin part, and how Coney was about to f- feed Falco to his mom. Uh huh. Um, and then you kind of you said you kind of wish there was more to Falco that part. After reading the Marley arc, I I I think I'm right there with you. I, <laughs> I, I I don't I I I'm almost disappointed that they they didn't 
have more for for Falco to say. And and I hope I hope Falco isn't done because he does have the Jaw Titan now. Yeah. And like surely surely he has more of a role to play in all this, especially when he kind of took some of the spotlight in in a whole entire arc. Um, you would think that that would carry over, but mm. anyway, that th- those are my thoughts on Falco. The very right. Best. Falco, like, and and I agree. Like, he was a very, he was very good in the Marley arc. Uh, in fact, like, he was one of my favorite characters that were introduced in the Marley arc. Like, mm-hmm. was like one of my, uh, like, early impressions of the Marley arc was like Falco is like one of my new favorites, uh, at the mm. time back then. Just because I feel like he was really well written in the Marley arc. Yeah. He had he had this mm-hmm. uh, this struggle to beat Gabby. He had really interesting interactions with Gabby, with Reiner, and of course with Aaron. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't know. I, I I just really, really enjoyed his character like like through and through in the Marley arc. And there's one moment in uh, chapter 104 where, um, it's after the battle in Liberio has started. And uh, it's, I mean, it's the chapter before Sasha is shot, so it's like everything's crazy. And he's with Gabby, and he tells her that maybe they can leave Reiner out of this fight. Because he had just seen, he had just witnessed Reiner's breakdown with Aaron, and I think right. one of his strengths is like he understands people like very mm-hmm. well, like better I think than most other characters. Um, That's very good. I I I never kind of put that together, but you're right. Yeah, because you know, like he he understands he understood Aaron. He under- yeah. yeah, right, right, yeah, and he understands Reiner like, in that moment. He understands Reiner's despair and mm-hmm. that Reiner needs rest. He needs to sort his head out and you know and i think that, that, that that's one of my favorite moments with i mean it's very slight but very brief but it's one of my favorite falco moments and just overall he was great in the marley arc and i'm very sad uh the way he's been written in the current arc because he i i feel like he's kind of bland uh or kind of yeah lame in the current arc right now he hasn't had that much interesting stuff going for him sadly to- totally agree and I, I part of me wonders if that's because I, I feel like it was well I- I integrated in the Marley arc, but now it, it feels like, you know, full on, for the most part, focus on like the main cast and, you know, those characters and less on the, you know, the people who were introduced in, in the Marley arc, you know? Mm. Yeah. Um, so, and, and maybe he's saving that for later when, you know, when we confront Aaron, but yeah, as of right now, it's, it's not as great as I, well, at least the 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 Marley arc Eric, Marley arc characters aside from Magus introduction, mm. um, their integration hasn't been as great as I would like. Everything right. else is great. <laughs> oh yeah, for the oh, most yeah. part. <laughs> right, and something we learn or very much like kind of get confirmed in the Marley arc is uh, that Reiner is like one of his primary qualities is his loyalty to Marley. It's def- It's very clear, especially in the flashbacks uh, when we see get to the. Uh, child reiner uh potentially the main reason why he became like one of the warrior candidates in the first place is potentially because uh of the written test where he i guess where he displayed his like Mm -hmm. how how much marley can trust him and what he thinks of marley and all that so like it's, it's his his uh loyalty to marley and i think and it's very much very clearly displayed in the first battle at Fort Slava, the very like first conflict in the Marley arc, where Zeke is about to get blasted by the ships, but Reiner jumps in front of him and takes the shots, uh, and yeah. he does that even though he knew like because prior in that scene, previously in that scene, Reiner had gotten shot by one of those anti-Titan uh, fire uh, rifles things, um, and he he learned previously that it pierces even his titan uh mm-hmm. even though he has like the best armor out of all titans so realizing that and then he jumps in front of zeke even though he knew that it would maybe kill him like it's uh i mean pr- probably i mean it was very dangerous and but, but he did it anyway uh because he probably knew that you know um or in his mind zeke was a very important uh sure person for for marley like I mean, I also, I also think it's because you know he sees himself as a shield at this point. Yeah. Um, and 
he is I even even then he's a bit suicidal. So not saying he was hoping <laughs> a bit to die, but I don't think he had much care for his own life, if that makes sense. Like if he if he died protecting someone, he he'd be okay with that, you know? Probably. Yeah. Like that you know, it's not it's not it's not like a big deal to him. Like he feels like he would deserve it. Mm. And actually something that's that's kind of I mean a lot of people say like, oh, Reiner just keeps getting saved by people all the time. But, you know, he does his good fair uh, yeah, share of saving, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you definitely. Know, def- ever since mm-hmm. um, since the Marley arc, at the very least, he saved Zeke in that first battle. He saved Falco when um, when Eren transformed into his titan. He, Reiner saved Falco yeah. there. He saved Gabby when the, when the walls crumbled. Yeah, well, even I think even before... Before the wall crumbled, didn't he? He saved someone, didn't he? Save he saved he saved Porco also uh, from from because uh, Aaron was gonna take the the jaw titan. Yeah, and so he actually right. even though, you know you know when Aaron, or when Reiner transforms into like this non armored titan, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like he looks really weird, um, just because he doesn't have the will to live in that moment. I think that's why he he doesn't get the full power of his titan in that moment. Hmm. Um, but he does manage to save Porco in that, uh, in that scene. Right. And then Porco saves him from being eaten by. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want to go back real quick to what you're saying about him being loyal to Marley when he was younger. And he definitely, I mean, there definitely was loyalty there, but again, that comes from like the brainwashing, but not hmm. only, not only, I mean, it's a lack of a better word brainwashing i mean right. you know, it's not i mean like, every, everyone in marley is brainwashed like even the like elderly yeah. like everyone like it, the, it's kind of been it, it's the government been is brainwashed into them and, yeah right. it's just in their culture mm. but I, I think that that loyalty stems from not so much wanting the country like wanting to serve his country at least when he was younger it was more i want to be it want to be a hero, and you mentioned that before. Yeah. But it's actually not. I don't think it's even just that. I think it's just because he wants his mother and his, especially his father, which you know he tried confronting, <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, to be proud of him. And yeah. then when that when his father basically rejects him after, after he meets him again, um, I think he changes that. And he kind of still has that mentality, but he kind of changes that to all of Marley, you know, viewing him as a hero, as. as you know, someone that belongs with them and not someone who is, you know, lower than dirt as his father basically treated him. True, right. So that, and I, so I, again, there's some daddy issues there. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe some symbolism with Zeke. I, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, yeah. so th- I feel like that's a lot of what younger um, Reiner's motivation was. But, you know, after the events of, uh, Par- parody and you know coming back from that i think that yeah that that motivation has more or less died as he's has as his you know understanding of the world you know his eyes have been opened mm. if you will yeah definitely i mean especially right now when he's cooperating with mikasa and armin and all of them mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. oh god so but yeah so uh let's talk a little bit about magath too uh because okay. i i thought it was really fun to revisit the Marley arc, uh, after having read the two most recent chapters, which both had some very interesting Magath stuff in them. Um, so in chapter 93, which is the third Marley arc chapter, it's after the battle in Fort Slava. Uh, there's a scene where Zeke and Colt are talking. Like after there's been a meeting, Zeke and Colt are just standing outside talking and Magath comes up to them and there's like this short little interaction where Magath and Zeke are making ass jokes with one another. And they're yeah. like, oh and, and, and like, it's just so funny. And the, the fact that Magath is able to joke with funny. an Eldian, like he's joking and like having a good time with an Eldian uh, in that way, I think is one of the early signs that just proves how, uh, or I, last, last month uh, in our episode from that one, I, I talked about how I thought that Magath having because of him having worked so closely with Eldians for like 20 years or something uh mm. because of that he he has an a greater understanding for the Eldians than i guess most other Marlians do because they don't usually you know interact oh, that much totally. with Eldians and that his his realization that Eldians aren't devils probably started you know 
growing inside of him since way before the most recent chapters, you know? Yeah. So this is another one of those early signs, or this is like the early sign that I was able to find where he's, you know, he's making ass jokes with Zeke and he's even laughing. (laughs) He's even laughing at one of Zeke's jokes. So I thought that was really nice. Yeah, I I agree with that. Um, (laughs) Just, just, just Magath in general, I, you know, when Magath came back, I I was kind of like meh about him. I mean, I mean, in recent chapters, I've been much, much more open and appreciative of what his character brings to the table. But mm. I, I just, I, I didn't really understand, didn't see what was great about him. Um, but after reading the Marley arc, I mean, he's not my favorite character because there's just so many good ones. But <sighs> I see why he's more important um, than I thought before. Mm. And uh, to kind of see his, you know slowly come to understand like you mentioned that not El- or the Eldians aren't like devils they're just they're just people like us mm. um it you know it it's it, it's it's nice to see that in in a Marleyan and you know he's kind of like the or one of the many like middle points you know kind of the the middle ground between the two yeah. people mm. and and I'm sure like unless he dies which I could see him dying still but yeah um he may be an important tool in building relationship between the two. Definitely. So, and and one other, it's actually the same chapter where they're making ass jokes when they're on the train, uh, going back to Liberia, uh, and all of the Eldians oh, yeah. are partying in one of the, in one of the wagons. Magath, mm-hmm. uh, Magath allows them to keep doing that. He allows them to, you know, to drink and have fun and make noise all night because he, he, I guess he thinks they deserve it. And he, yeah, he's he's cool with them, doing that, and that, that that's another one of those l- little signs that you know he he isn't completely hateful of Eldians like most other Marleans are. Yeah, I agree. And this also the same chapter ninety ninety three. There's uh, it, it's at least from what I've seen. Like maybe I've missed stuff, but uh, there's the first little tease of Aaron being in Marley. I mean, it's you, I don't think anyone could actually like tell at that moment that it was Aaron but you you can't see him in his like hobo uh outfit. Oh, you talk about him behind the speech bubbles? Um he is like when uh when Reiner is with the children in uh in Liberia. You can see uh I think in like one of the last panels of that scene you see like Aaron's just like his the back of his head kind of uh very subtly in chapter 93 it's in one of the, it's one of the scenes hmm. with Reiner and the children. Uh, Wait, you see random children, are they on a train or something? Uh, no, it's like they're in Liberia, I'm pretty sure. Like, what's going on? Like, uh, I, I don't know, like, Reiner and, and the, the four kids are, like, out somewhere in Liberia, like, on the streets. And, and Aaron is, like, observing them. But obviously they don't notice, and, like, we as readers barely notice it, too. Especially not the first time mm-hmm. around. We definitely don't. Because, we, you, know, you know, we can't see his face, we only see, like, the back of his head and kind of, like his shoulders it, it, from what I can recall but he's there very very subtly gotcha I remember I just remember like re- reading it and you know even when I was first reading binging it I, I remember seeing Aaron behind speech bubbles I was like yeah, they're trying to hide him <laughs> which I was kind of freaking I was like what is that him but <laughs> yeah so it's yeah. next to, in chapter 94 is a little bit more more of a an obvious uh, tease of Aaron is when he's like walking in that line of people like uh Ah, uh, okay. Cri- so there's a different. People. So there's a different moment then. Yeah, it's the one. So th- this in the chapter after the first one is the one where uh, Falco helps him to like get the armband on the right arm. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you recall, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's like right after they've entered Liberio and Termin Zone. It's nice. They they kind of eased him in there, and I think that the, for those first two, especially not the first one, and probably also the second one, I don't think people realized it was him. Oh my gosh! I totally see it now. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. I mean, because it's like the focus, the point of focus is not anywhere near there. Oh, no, exactly. So, <laughs> oh, my gosh, yeah that's, yeah. that's really good. Yeah, so he appeared twice before he actually appeared, like, for real with Falco at the hospital. Uh, mm-hmm. So that was very nice. That's cool. In Chapter 94, after, I think it's around the time when they, uh, oh, right, no, it's, it's, it's when they get off the train. It's when they get off the train at the beginning of Chapter 94, when uh, Gabby is causing Falco to blush, and cause, like because she goes like too close to his face, 
and she doesn't yeah. realize she she doesn't realize what she did, but everybody else is like laughing, and they, everybody understands why Falco is blushing, but like Gabby doesn't get the hint at all, and she's like, she's what the so hell? oblivious. <laughs> I think it's so such a precious little moment. I know, I I love it. She's <laughs> and I, she's so precious, and I love I love those two so much, and mm. like. Yeah. <laughs> I, there's like so many moments where it's like she's very sweet like you, you, like outside of war like she seems like a very sweet person and like yeah she um is so is is so kind but also very like passionate and anyway that's another reason why i really like her so much but <laughs> but then you know we have falco who's clearly has feelings for her but she's just so oblivious <laughs> to everything that it kind of creates this interesting relationship yeah between those two uh-huh <laughs> it's it's really nice and then there's um, also in chapter 94 is one of my favorite scenes of the Marley arc. The scene at the dinner table with the Brown family, with Reiner and, and Gabby and their parents. Uh, like they, they're celebrating that they're back from the war. And, mm. and Reiner starts talking about his time on Paradise Island. And it's, it's just like one of the most heartbreaking monologues, I think, because he's... He's trying to describe his old friends from from parodies as uh, like trying to like show them in really bad light, but mm-hmm. the things that he says about them they don't really sound that negative. Like right. you know, he's just make trying to make it sound that way, but it's really not. It's really just perfectly normal human things that he's saying about these people, but he, he's trying to make it sound like they're devils, and. And he can't even he can't even come up with bad things to say about all of them because when like th- there's like a panel like he's thinking of Historia there, and he just goes silent. He can't say anything about her, for example. You know. You know? Right. Yeah. It's just so sad. It is very sad. Part part of me wonders if, if he was trying to say bad things or if he was just trying to, in a roundabout way, say that they, you know, were were people just like they. They, you know, they weren't the devils that they thought, but he knows he can't say that in the place he is. Oh, yeah. You know, obviously the family will understand. So he kind of just says it, says it in a roundabout way. And there is that moment where he kind of looks just kind of sad after saying all that. Mm. And then he, you know, he gets back to serious and says, the days I spent there were true, were, were true hell. Yeah. And, or he also said, I said a little too much. So I, I feel like he was just, he was in a way like trying to understand his, well, Maybe like convey his true feelings, but you know, still hide them, um, because he knew because he knows like the family won't be able to take that or won't even accept it, and they would probably, yeah. hmm. I don't know, maybe maybe even ostracize him for that. I'm not sure, but right. that that is an interesting way to interpret it. I don't think I see it that same way though. Even though I I think that's definitely like I'm not saying that's wrong in any way. I just I don't I don't think so personally. The way I think it this scene was or this the Reiner's the Reiner's thought process is here is that because of the society that he lives in that and that he's grown up in or not completely grown up and he grew up partially in parodies too to be fair but but anyway he um he's almost like fooling himself I think is is what was happening uh mm-hmm. it's like he, he's trying his best to to describe these people in a bad light but he doesn't really succeed at it because at deep down like at the bottom of his heart he he doesn't think ill of these people but he's trying to make it sound that way and he's trying to f- convince himself that they are bad people uh because like in his mind he he wants to be a good marleyan or a good eldian you know he wants to be uh an honorary marleyan and you know be loyal to marley as we talked about earlier he wants that in his head but in his heart he doesn't like in his heart he knows that those people are just human like everybody else mm. i think he, i think it's a conflict in a way in inside of him I mean, I do, th- I do agree that like, there, there is, is still conflict there, but I think like, I think his true feelings are coming out there, and like he, mm, mm. you know, he's he's For trying sure. to convey, you know, tell his family, you know, that they're not. But uh, I'm, I'm just, I guess I'm just like re- repeating what I said before. But you, you know, mm. he's he's doing it in a roundabout way, uh, making them seem like normal people. You know, he know he knows he can't just come out and say, you know, they're good people. Right. Um, but but I, I do I do see where you're I can see I can see where your point of view is. I mean, we do know that Reiner has had mental issues in the past, but I mm. er, well, yes. that's a, 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 an appropriate thing to say. But he I don't know, for me for me here it's 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 definitely kind of a you know, he's tired of people calling that almost tired of people calling them devil and feels bad that he has to kind of live this lie. Um Yeah. Or, or and, and you know, well 
maybe, maybe that's going too far. Like I, I think, cause I think deep inside he cares for these, he cares for them. Like he found out that he cared for them just like, um, as we see with Aaron, how Aaron says, you know, you, uh, Reiner, you and I are the same. I also came here hating your people, but then I, I realized that you're just people like, you're just like us. Hmm. Yeah, sure. There's horrible dirt bags, but <laughs> yeah. then there's the good people. And, you know, it shows Falco, you know, you know, throwing, showing right. Falco more love. Yeah. And I think in that case, it shows that Reiner does definitely see them, even even in his head, sees them as as people. But he just can't because he's that 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 mindset has been ingrained in him and and his family and the end, you know, the people. He can't just come out and say, guys, they're just they're just people. Right. Otherwise, you know, he, he, who knows what they would do to him. I guess I guess if he wanted I guess if he really wanted to die he could do that but <laughs> anyway. yeah so that I get that's my thanks I think our our viewpoints are similar it's just in mine it's that he he's doing it subconsciously instead of okay instead of instead, instead of consciously right that oh that's a good way to put it I so yeah I think it consciously and you think it's subconsciously well, right I, I, at least because I mean that's really the only difference between the way we interpret this and yeah. i think i think that's close enough i mean i think that's good <laughs> yeah sure we can agree to I, I can i can live there. with that <laughs> yeah totally uh so moving on a little bit um oh yeah so there's another really nice scene in the next chapter at 95 where they we for the first time we see these two gate guards that are like guarding the gate to the liberio internment zone uh because you know Ever since the Grisha memory or Grisha basement flashbacks, uh, like the, ever since we've known of Marley, we've known that the aliens in there are are treated like worse than animals. Like they're they're treated horribly, uh, mm -hmm. and of course they they also show that in the Marley arc, uh, you know, as well. But these two gate guards are so so friendly with like uh, Gabby and Reiner and like yeah. all of them like they're so nice they're like so respectful and just nice I, I it just makes me happy to see them and it it makes the world feel more nuanced like you know more real I like that mm -hmm. those characters while they are very minor they really add a lot to the to the feeling of the story I think I wonder if it's also because they are they're candidates um mm. and if they were just regular Eldians, they maybe not have been treated with the same respect mm, yeah. but hey, you know we that's just me speculating and right, right. but what we, what we can see here is yeah they definitely have a, have a a, a def, more friendly um outlook and it kind of like a you know uncle kind of a, a feel <laughs> it's yeah. like oh yeah you can you joke around but be careful you know don't don't joke around with the wrong people you never know what can happen uh, <laughs> i guess so yeah but nonetheless, I like them, even though they're they're small characters. <laughs> they die anyway. They die by you Sasha's like... hand. Sasha snipes <laughs> them both. Sasha's oh. a beast. Sasha deserved to die. No, I'm just kidding. What? Just kidding. Just kidding. I mean, granted, like you know, <laughs> if anybody was gonna die, it probably <laughs> it'd probably be the one who killed the friendly gate guards. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. totally different topic but uh -huh. just going back to the end of 94 yeah um, 94 was definitely one of my favorite chapters in the Mar Ar marley arc mm. um for for various reasons um but i i, I do like the ending um it's kind of comedic but also poetic um it shows you know it shows reiner when he's younger and mm. you know i'm gonna make my parents the proudest of all you know he's looking at the sky and then he yeah. goes to aaron when he was younger you know on on their island and He's looking up the sky as well, and the, and the sky connects him. And Aaron's Aaron's like, I wish something would happen. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm bored. <laughs> it's it's so, oh yeah. man, yeah. It, it, it it's comedic to me, but at the same time, I, I appreciate the the parallels and the uh -huh. and and I guess you call it the opposites because Reiner has this you know big dream, whereas Aaron is kind of just wishing something would happen. Right, yeah, Aaron at that point doesn't really have anything going on uh -huh. for him. Mm, mm. Anyway, true. So I yeah. <laughs> I feel like I would be I would regret not bringing out that one up. Oh, it's fine. I mean, Aaron got what he wished for. <laughs> Something <He> did, did <laughs> happen. <laughs> I, he did. Oh boy. Yeah. I like Piek, by the way. Uh, yes. I think she's very likable. Like she is mm -hmm. one of those characters uh that 
I, maybe it's the design. Like, to, I think to a degree, might it might be. I just really like her design. I think she's, she's kind of she, cute. She's got beautiful hair. She's got a cute face. Mm-hmm. She's 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 quirky. She's funny. Like mm-hmm. she's got a nice like she she's a well written character for the small amount of time she's been given. I think. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. said, though, she hasn't had too much interesting things going for her. I wish she would have a little more. Um, she she kind of plays more of a role in battle than anything else, mm. um, which is cool to see. But yeah, it would be nice to have her character play a part more, but. Oh well, I, I you know reading this, I was kind of like, ooh, like her and 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 Porco, right? Her, mm. oh wow, her and Porco could be a thing or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that definitely sh- ship kind of sank if it ever existed. To be with, but, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But no, I'm glad I'm glad PX still around, and maybe mm. yeah, maybe I mean if if the eight eight or so eight nine Titans play a factor, I guess nine if you consider if you count the founding Titan, right? Mm. If they if they count, or if they all got to play a factor in something in the end, then yeah, I'm sure Piek will have a little more time to shine. Definitely hope so. Uh, I mean, I feel like with well, her, she's kind of the opposite of Magath in a way, in, in, in the sense that, as I, like I mm. said, like she's very easy to like. At least for me, she was. Whereas Magath... Oh, I think, I think she's... Magath is a more, like... He's, he isn't as easy to, like, get behind. You know, it can, it can take a while to, to really see what's so good about Magath. Uh, but when you really do see it, I mean, he's amazing, but it, it does take a while. And I think you said something similar to that before too. Yeah, I think, yeah, he's definitely, he's definitely a good guy. And, you know, his racism, I guess you could say, mm-hmm. towards the Marleans, or you know, his prejudice towards, towards not the Marleans, the Eldians, yeah. you know, is virtually gone at this point. And, you right. know, he's, he's definitely open-minded. And I, like you said, I think him has spending time with, the Eldians and Marley um, led him to this point. Mm. Um, but I, I could see someone like kind of overlooking that if they're not paying attention carefully. Right. Yeah. And especially like the early Marley arc when it's not. Yeah. Like when he, he, he I guess he has, he, we, it's, you know, we got so many new characters to focus on. So it's hard to mm-hmm. really like at, at, at first anyway, it's really, it's pretty hard. I think it's what happened with me. You know, there's just so many things to focus on. Right. I was just trying, I was really just trying to find something that was consistent uh-huh. <laughs> from what, from what I was, Reading all of a sudden, you know. Like, I mean? Reiner has a beard now? <laughs> Everything has changed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's, it's, it's good. I, I like Reiner's beard. I think he, I think he wears that oh, beard. Sure. He owns that beard, you know. But anyway, <laughs> chapter 96, one of my favorite chapters. It is entirely flashbacks to Reiner's uh, young years. Or, well, and, and also, you know, Berthold and Annie. And something that I think is pretty nice... So, chapter 96 starts right after Marcel was eaten by Ymir's Titan. Mm. And they reach, or they they stop at a tree, like somewhere out in the field, outside the walls, somewhere. And that tree looks a lot like the tree that the whole story started underneath, where uh, Aaron and Mikasa were. Obviously, it's not the same tree. I mean, I'm not saying it's the right. same tree, because obviously that was I, inside I, the I walls. I had the same and, thought, like, mm. ooh, a tree in the middle of a field, kind of reminds me of the beginning. Also, kind yeah. of reminds me of, like, kind of the... The paths tree. I mean, very different. Yeah, <laughs> very different. But just you know, a, a tree in the middle of a field. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on, you can't you can't put that in a Isayama without people like thinking. You know, it's like okay, right. well, what are the what are the symbolisms there? Thing is, I um, I don't think it means anything. I just think it's no, a nice visual no. reference, kind of. I I agree. I uh, agree. But and, I just say, just saying that it definitely <laughs> it definitely you know made me like think like okay, what? <laughs> yeah. What yeah, does this mean? But yeah, for I, sure. I came to the same kind of conclusion. You know. And all like not, not only is it potentially the same type of tree it's also the same day as like as that um our uh, Aaron and Mikasa was under that type oh. of tree you know it's it's the, the same day the the walls got breached like but before the walls got breached but it, it is that same day uh so I think that that's another one little, like little nice thing about like the the similarity there and then that's chapter 96 right yeah exactly chapter 96 and then that of course ultimately leads up to them Breaching while Maria and seeing that scene from their perspective was just a uh, breathtaking. Yeah, like definitely. so good. Added so much depth, like to to the to Reiner and Berthold. Since I mean, or the Colossal and the Armored Titan were the ones we saw back then in like chapter one or chapter two or whatever. Um, I, um, 
I think. Sorry, I I don't mean to like bring up another point, but that's fine. Or cut cut you off. <laughs> uh, we know you know how Reiner has kind of had some of those like, uh, maybe multiple personality disorders. Yeah, I think it's I think it's called disso- dissociative identity disorder. Yeah, but... dissociative identity disorder. Mm. I think I mean, and I and I know that hasn't been confirmed or right. You know, what to what extent? Mm. You know, that maybe they're just like short term memory loss things that he forces himself to. I don't know, mm. but there's a moment where he says he'll basically become Marcel, yeah. and there's times where, I, in in this either in this chapter or sometime in the Marley arc where Annie or Bertolt say that that you kind of have become Marcel or you've kind of like taken a different role or something like that um if, you know if it wasn't for you we wouldn't this wouldn't be happening um and and I think and I think like there could be some that, that could be some evidence to pointing to that maybe he at that point kind of took on the role of Marcel and that personality Exactly. And maybe that is the personality that, you know, will get things done. But then the real, potentially the real Reiner comes out and be like, whoa, what happened to to Marco? You know? Yeah, a hundred percent. Definitely. Like, yeah. that's definitely that's the my, way. That's my thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you're absolutely right. In the words of Zeke Jaeger, absolutely right. Or that exactly right. Or whatever he says. Like, he's pointing at Piek like three times oh, yeah. or something in the story. He <laughs> has so like. so awkward. That's exactly right, Piek. <laughs> Uh, but, it happened twice. <laughs> yeah, it happens like two or three times. It's like, or like t- you know, twi- I, twice in the same scene, and then later on as well when he's in the Titan form during the battle. In to Liberia. be honest, I wonder why he was like that. I mean, I guess they've they've kind of been working together for a while, but <laughs> and then I realized, like, well, you know, Zeke is supposedly in his twenties, right? I think he's twenty nine. Like yeah. In okay, twenty nine. After the time skip, not, I think not, he's twenty nine. Okay, uh, which to be honest, like when I when he first appeared, I thought he was in his forties. Yeah, I mean, he looks the, old. The beard. Right, the beard puts so much age. And I think it's also the black and white. Yeah. Um, mm. But uh, anyway, but yeah, no, he's much young. He's he's well, much younger. He's younger than he looks in my eyes. So, what if yeah. what if he's trying to, like you know, <laughs> smooth talk, <laughs> like try to get her a good side? I don't know. Like, I know this is kind of. I don't. <laughs> oh. I'm not saying there's a. I'm not saying there's like anything between them. But I'm just. I think it. I think it'd be comedic if the uh. reason why he's like that is you know he's trying. To Ooh. keep his options open. Interesting. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, that's I, I I enjoy that take. <laughs> I'm not, not not saying that Piek is interested whatsoever, but anyway, I just thought mm. it was interesting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Other other than just being super awkward. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> but on the topic of uh, of Zeke looking old, old, like older than he is, uh, I think I think that's an intentional thing because I think it was. I can't remember actually now when it was brought up or maybe if it not like maybe it never never even was but uh, Aaron Kruger uh, also looked older than he was I think he he looked very like torn out look, like worn out anyway yeah um, and and so he the did thing look is kind of in his forties maybe yeah and I I'm I don't know maybe he was supposed to be that but I I think he I feel like he wasn't so mm-hmm. the way I I don't even know where I'm getting this from but the, <laughs> what I think is that titan shifters when they're like when they're on like their last year of their term like when they're like you know when when they're soon to die from the 13 year curse thing uh mm-hmm. they start like their body starts becoming worse you know they they look older yeah, they look more worn out you know yeah um and i think that's the case at least with both uh zeke and and aaron kruger because they were both like Aaron Kruger, he says he 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 was soon about to die from it, which was why he passed his power on to Grisha. Mm-hmm. And the same goes for Zeke. He's on his he's on his last year right now. However, Grisha didn't look that old when he passed his powers on to Aaron. So I don't know. Maybe it's uh maybe it's not true. I don't know. Facial hair does add years. True, true that. But Aaron didn't have Aaron Kruger didn't have facial hair though. So yeah, he was very clean clean shaven. He was a th- good looking man. I think he was. Yeah. Well, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So that that's it. So I, I remember. I remember just nice quick tangent. I I remember uh-huh. when it was revealed that Aaron and Zeke were were siblings. It just blew my mind. Just because <laughs> how is that even possible? Zeke looks older than Grisha. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> like almost. How, yeah. <laughs> how, how is that possible? Yeah. Uh, but but understanding that you know, especially if you have an exact age for um, the Marley arc, twenty nine, like that. You know, 
that makes a lot more sense. It's right. It seems more, a lot more uh, feasible. Yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. Yeah. And he was so he was twenty five during the Battle of Shiganshina and like all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, he, he's exactly ten years older than Aaron, so that's uh, yeah, an, e- an easy nice. way to to think of it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's a good way to think about it. Mm. Makes it easier to swallow. Easy to remember. A lot, yeah. <laughs> a lot easier to remember. <laughs> yep. So yeah, the seeing the breach of the wall through the eyes of the warriors was amazing. Intense. And, yeah. And uh moving on into chapter ninety seven, we still we still get some of those flashbacks about, you know, from uh and and I think and this is like from the, the training days in the training core. And something I really liked, they uh, or Isayama uh, worked flock into into one of those scenes uh, when they're like in like the dining hall with like the the training cadets, uh, and I you know I think it's what, what when uh, when Aaron and John go on like one of those fights they I guess had a lot of times in the dining hall, mm-hmm. uh, and and flock is like cut it out guys it's too early for this shit or so I mean I don't know exactly the words but. Flock is there anyway, even though he technically wasn't, like, Flock wasn't made up until the Uprising arc, I think. Like, the end of the Uprising arc. But he, he was, canonically, he was there, like, with oh, all, okay. all the main characters. He, he, he was supposed to yeah, have been there. Yeah, I never there. realized that was, that was Flock. Mm. <laughs> it's pretty funny, I think, to see him there. I mean, it would make sense that he was there, but... Yeah. He's kind of, he's just kind of always been in the background. But... Yeah. I kind of wish he would have been an actual character from the start, because it would have been more fun to have followed him totally. along from the beginning yeah and then kind of see his you know his his yeah his growth and mm. change but yeah I, I totally i agree with that but oh well i mean sometimes you can't predict where the story your own story is going to go you can maybe, maybe yeah. you know where the ending is but some of the little pieces you can't always oh yeah for sure like predict. like definitely but imagine if they started making the anime now then they could have definitely they it, I, i'm sure they would have put flock in there uh, at least to some degree, like maybe not having him be sure. super prominent, but at least to have him there uh, yeah. would have been nice. And I think they would have done that. Mm. And then, oof, then one of, another one of the most powerful moments in, I think, the whole series. It's not just the Marley arc, in the whole series, to me, is when it's like the transition from Reiner's flashback bit back into present day. Uh, where yeah. we start seeing Reiner readying the rifle, and like it's just like bit by bit, we see like little hints of it as it's moving back out of the flashback, and then you flip the page and bam, like this whole page page long picture of Reiner with a rifle in his mouth. It's like oh my god, Reiner! Ah, <laughs> oh, it's yeah. so well made. Oh god, like I get all emotional every time I read that that part. So yeah, good. it's it's very it's very well done. Mm. Like, you know, you're trying to kind of try to understand what's going on, but it's still, you're still able to follow it at the same time. Yeah. If that yeah. makes sense. And, you mm. know, then it just all comes to that, that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you kind of like, at first you don't really understand, like at least like for the very, very first shot, like back to the present day, you only see like, I don't know the, what the first thing it snaps to is, but like, you don't really understand it at first, but then you start seeing like a, a few more of those flat flash forwards i guess to present day and, and you see like someone readying a rifle and it's like oh my god is this what i think it's going to be or at least that that was my my mind process like when i first read it and then it, it actually was because i yeah I, mean, I don't know it was very sad yeah huh. uh just reading some of my notes about this part mm-hmm. uh eh, not not too much but just that you know reiner was about to end it all but if it wasn't for falco or gabby he, he might have you know, just think about that. But he knew that he could mm. almost kind of trust to trust the future. That he knew he had to be there for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and you know, kind of make sure that they don't have or. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he wanted to make sure they didn't have the same future that he did. Um, mm. You know, and, and, and in particular, you know, Falco trying to save Gabby. I think he kind of um, felt that was a a good cause to get behind, and so that's why that's why he kind of support that. Absolutely, and in addition to that, I think he also felt he 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 remembered that he was loved. You know, there there were some oh, people, yeah. like yeah. good people, that he loved and that loved him, and that you know, that goes a long way. That's I think that's that's what saves a lot of people really, and it's super important. 
uh and yeah beautiful scene like it's it's awful but then it's all it turns be- into something very beautiful mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i agree mm-hmm. um uh, and then just taking a couple of steps back uh mm-hmm. talk when when they're kind of reiner uh, annie and berthold are talking about plans of what <laughs> yeah you know and <laughs> this is more of a joke a- annie was like Oh, maybe I should like try to marry some guy in in the in the capital or yeah. in the middle, and and Bert was like, no, no, don't do it. And and he's like, yeah, you're probably right. No one want to marry me. No, no, of course they would. Like, Bert told, dude. I mean, we get it. Way way to be subtle. Like, come on, yeah, Bert. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, oh gosh, gosh. <laughs> so hilarious yeah but um, I, I do like because annie annie has like she, she looks kind of flattered like she has like this expression oh like, really like, at least like it's like a like a you think so toned down expression of let feel, me see. feeling let me, a little bit look, flattered look, look, look. like i think like for his last like for battle's last comments to her i feel like the way i i interpreted her face there was like she she felt a little flattered by that i think like i i don't have the i'm uh, the the manga in front of me right now but there's another part where like Reiner's really close to Annie face and and Bertolt just kind of gets this look. It's like yeah, Please don't. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. When it's like nighttime and they're like making some plans. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it, I think I think the scene I was talking about was previous chapter. My bad. Okay. Yeah. Actually, um, maybe we're. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in that scene, I think they're younger. I think that's before they join the, the training, core. I think because that's when they're like doing some like. Uh, land work like or like something oh yeah 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 right so yeah because that's yeah so then that is earlier that's true oh i okay now i see it but she's like she has a question mark it would be she's a question mark like two question marks like <laughs> oh. one she's kind of silent question mark and then she's like thanks like, right i true. i don't know i don't i think it's more like she doesn't know how to take it like uh-huh. almost like she's a little clueless about it i guess um, i guess that, that that could also be it <laughs> but anyway um hmm. I mean, I think that that'd be nice if she was flattered. Um, yeah. <laughs> there, but there was one more one more thing I wanted to mention. Yeah. Um, I want to get your. I mean, it's so minor, but. Uh huh. Um, the guy that they talked to, who mm. ended up, you know, hanging himself. Yeah. Um, do you think because Ber- Bertolt brings that up? Yes. Is it so? I, I it felt like that it was almost implied that that Reiner may have done it. Do you, what? do you think that was the case or do you think that the guy did actually kill himself? Whoa, I that never even crossed my mind that that could have been the thing. I don't think that happened. Because yeah, and, and that's fair. Like I I I think that just because I need to get I need to get back to that that part. When I think cuz does he go cuz they go back to it, don't they? Yeah, the beginning of chapter 99. I was also I also took some notes about that actually, because I have some things I thought was interesting about that. Yeah, because like there's the, like they go back to that flashback very briefly at the very beginning of chapter ninety nine. I was wondering what's so important about that, but maybe it was because Reiner actually did it. Okay, that that's an interesting take. I, I mean, I mean, <laughs> hey, like you, you can tell me I'm wrong. That's fine. I mean, I. I, I, I think you're wrong, but that's just my opinion. Like maybe I'm well, maybe I'm actually wrong. Uh, <laughs> so here, let, I, I let me let me reread it again, or just like look at it real quick. I mean, right. Uh, in the meantime, I can give you my two cents on on that. Sure. So there's that flashback again. Like they they, they cut back to and give a little bit more uh, more to that little scene in the be- at the beginning of chapter ninety nine. And Bertold, uh, so Bertold brings up the man that hanged himself, and he wonders. Uh, why he told them his story um, before he committed suicide, like and his story being that he was the only survivor of this like very tiny, uh, not very well known little settlement. He was the only survivor ah. after the Titans came, uh, and so there's actually two things I thought was interesting in in this uh, when they cut back to this. So. Annie answers the question first, or, or well, maybe, I, I don't know, uh, Reiner says something, like, he just kind of brushes it off, like, doesn't really think much of it, um, but Annie's, uh, a- Annie suggests that the man told them about this because he wanted someone to forgive him, and, right. and I don't know if you remember what we talked about in last month's chapter of Titan Tea Time, but 
there was a, a discussion that I tried to push where I, where I tried to try to push for Annie. Well, that, that basically that she, she has, she wants forgiveness. She, 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 she's craving forgiveness in a, in a sense. And that whole thing started. I, now I can't actually recall exactly what it was in the most recent chapter. Uh, what it was exactly that made me go on to that uh, thought. But it, it, it kind of also goes hand in hand with uh, from the second to most previous chapter where where she you know when uh, when Jean is like uh, Reiner I'm not I, I can't forgive you you know when they're on the wagon and then uh, Annie is like then how about me and what about me and like in that scene it's just it just played as a joke kind of like from Isayama uh, but I think there's more weight to it. I think there's more meaning there I think I think Annie has ever since ever since at least this in this flash flashback where she clearly like she suggests that maybe that man wanted forgiveness I think it's because she also maybe seeks it to some degree like maybe she feels more guilt over having uh like breached the walls on parodies than she wants to admit um is my thinking uh-huh so before I touch that I I, I reread it and I, I I agree with you that it's it wasn't wasn't Reiner who necessarily mm. did it. I, I, I think I just thought that because Reiner was so quiet about the situation and he just kind of looked, he had like those shifty eyes. So I was like, wait, what's going yeah. on? <laughs> um, and I thought, but I did think it was strange that he would just talk to them and all of a sudden kill himself. But after mm. rereading it and, you know, hearing what you're talking about and reading some of the, some of the, um, uh, th- uh, there's like a, there's like a, like a title. Well, it's more, it's more of like a subtitle to the chapter. It says, there are times when men are crushed by the weight they, they carry on their own backs. And I think the, the man who hung himself is supposed to be representative of Reiner in the oh, yeah. sense that he, the man wanted to get something, wanted to have someone pass judgment on the, for, the, for the things, you know, for abandoning the people right. and leaving what he said. And, but he, couldn't, he just couldn't deal with that guilt, so he ended up killing himself. Mm-hmm. And I think that parallels so so well with Reiner because he was he was at that point where he felt like he did such a terrible thing, you know, and mm. you know to to people who were you know, people, not just not not devils, they were actually people. Exactly. And he felt so bad, so he was about to pull the trigger. Yeah. And so that's and so and that's how I feel the the why that was important to bring that up again is because in this in this moment Reiner feels like that man. Precisely. Um. And so, yeah, he wants someone to pass judgment. And I think he finally gets that uh, in in one of the recent chapters. Uh, yeah, and I think, I mean, I think he actually got Get it. Get that forgiveness. I think he, oh, the forgiveness. Uh, yeah. Yes. I mean, to a degree, anyway. Yeah. Uh, but he gets the, the judgment that he won, that he got, he got right there from Aaron in the basement. Or well, he didn't. Well, he he didn't really. He I think he yeah, okay. I so agree. he he, he wanted really. he wanted Aaron to, to mm-hmm. give it to him. he and he I think he yeah. expected it. Um, I think I think it, it, the opposite happened. Aaron kind of sympathized with him. Right, and that um, yeah, and that and that, that threw Reiner off. But I think you're exactly mm-hmm. right. Exactly right. There we are again with Zeke's finger. Exactly right. Um, but anyway, um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. You coming on to me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, so yeah, one of these days I'm going to cosplay as Zeke and you're going to cosplay as Piek. Um, yes, Piek. <laughs> uh, I'd be a very ugly Piek. <laughs> Don't Piek say that. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, I, I think you're exactly right, uh, in your interpretation here of Reiner wanting the same thing that this man wanted. And, and so with that said, I think, because after Annie suggests that the man wanted someone to forgive him, Bertolt suggests that the man, uh, he, th- he thinks the man wanted someone to judge him. And I think Bertolt is right. Like, I think he, I think his speculation there is more accurate. Uh, but, but, he, but yeah. that said, though, I think Annie's suggestion, I think, is interesting in the way that, that, that I tried to explain here earlier, that it, it adds more to her character than, than I think we realized at the time. There was this, this thing about forgiveness from her. And then there was, the, that's, again... I guess that's fair. Again, in chapter 126, right? The one where she, uh, on the wagon, where it's played as a joke, and she's, she's like, oh, well, what about me? Will he forgive me? And, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. that's never answered. But that's also one of those kind of, like, just pass-by comments, or pass-by uh, lines that, that adds to that. And then there was, in the most recent chapter, oh, so sorry, 127 was the one 
where that joke on the wagon, I mean, it wasn't a joke, but it felt like a joke. It was very funny at the time. Uh, anyway, and it was now the most recent chapter, 128. Uh, we talked about last month where Annie is like, tell me, Armin, tell me your big plan, just like you did when you drove me into a corner. And it was when we talked about this last month, when I mm -hmm. brought, when I first brought up this idea that Annie, like forgiveness is a very important thing for her character and that she, she wants that pretty probably kind of desperately uh because of all of the awful things that she she's made i think she's she's putting off a facade she, she's very good at playing cool i think she mm -hmm. but but she she like deep down she has this desire to be forgiven very very strongly is what i I, I don't know about very strongly i i think it, i think it's like somewhat there i i i i still think the thing of the wagon is is meant to be a joke i mean it, it is funny. but i think and it's I, more and I, think, I think she <laughs> and i and i think that she um w you know that yeah like would would like to be forgiven like you know put things put stuff behind her but at the same time like she has she her her main drive is not forgiveness it's to go save her dad is to yeah no for it's sure to, it's to be with her dad whereas reiner that's that's all that's all that he wants other than you know uh death i guess i'm not but... sure if forgiveness is what he craves exactly well i guess he's at this point that he feels like he can't be forgiven yeah i think he's fine with not being forgiven and i don't think that's but, that's but, ever but what i he think really like wanted. sometimes sometimes you th you think that when not not you specifically but like people think that mm. when they think forgiveness will not come or like forgiveness is not possible but i i Maybe. think they've mm. reached i think they've reached that point where it is there and i and i think reiner is finally like getting that like you know coming mm. to grips with that um he, he can he can change himself but but in 127 in 127 which was the second to most recent chapter right right, uh, right. the one where the you know the joke on the wagon mm -hmm, uh mm -hmm. what happens before annie says how about me what about me is jean says like or something along the lines to reiner that i i still can't forgive you and reiner is fine with that in that moment well, of course and, yeah, I, yeah. I think like I think it's there's I think there's a difference between you know like get, letting your guilt out there and mm. keeping it inside yourself and I think part of forgiveness is also like the person needs to seek forgiveness and I think that by saying what you've done and telling the people who have been harmed like what what has happened and that you're sorry I think that is is very healthy and and part of the forgiveness process and i sure. don't blame john for being saying he can't forgive him um but i think that by saying that he'll work with him or you know he'll put the stuff behind or, or whatever he said i th i think that in and of itself is 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 forgiveness in a way you're you're basically forgetting mm. what not forgetting but you know not letting what happened behind in in the past destroy i guess your relationship or like oh yeah um mm. Not how not holding a grudge as much, I guess. But maybe, uh, yeah. maybe I guess maybe he still holds a grudge. I don't know. But mm. I guess I guess that's my thinking. I, right. No, I think I think that's also actually. But I, I can I can <laughs> see I can see I can see where it's wrong. Yeah, and just to be clear, I don't mean that. I think I mean I I think Reiner would probably be happy to be forgiven, but I don't think he's like actively seeking it necessarily. Mm. But I think I mean being forgiven would probably make Reiner feel good. I mean you know. But it's not what he's after necessarily. I think is what I think. But yeah, that's fair. Uh, so in hundred or sorry, in chapter ninety-seven, we also the, the, this is the chapter where we get Aaron confirmed. It's you know Falco meets him on the bench at the hospital yard, mm -hmm. and that's you know from that point on every every reader knows that's Aaron right there. So right. that's that's nice. And he, yeah, and he was kind of named by the fandom, or this this version of Aaron was named Ho uh, Hobo Aaron. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I was excited for this Aaron. And then uh -huh. the beginning of the current arc happened, and then I, I was I was very confused. I was like, what? What specifically what happened? What, what specifically made you confused there? Oh, well, just his attitude towards everything and, like, how he was so mysterious and he wouldn't tell everybody oh, yeah. anybody the plans or he <laughs> felt like he was betraying everybody. Um, but then, you know, in reality, he was betraying Zeke, yeah. and, you know, he was still, he's still the same Aaron, 
But now he's gonna cramp everything, so I guess it's still kind of confusing. But <laughs> anyway. Yeah, yeah, that, that 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 is funny. That is funny because at the beginning of the story, we followed everything th- through Aaron's eyes, you know, and the world yeah. was the riddle. But after like after all that, suddenly we knew everything about the world, and Aaron was the riddle instead. Mm-hmm. And he he still kind of is. Oh yeah, absolutely. I I don't think he's necessarily going to rumble the whole world, you know. I think. Yeah. I mean. I mean. I don't know. I know for pe- sure. people will point. People will point to that. That the thing he tells everybody that I'm going to, you know, trample the entire world or whatever. Which is, <laughs> it's a pretty, you know, pretty hard to fight. Uh, to fight against that statement, <laughs> <laughs> argue against that statement. But uh. who knows? He could be. He could be lying. There could be. There could be something other he has in in, in mind. I don't know. Yeah. No. Absolutely. It, it, it just. It just seems to me that. You know, a guy who fights for other people's freedoms, not just his own, it, it, it just seems to be the almost opposite of what he'd want to accomplish. Right. Um, but anyway, revealing Aaron like this was great. And, you know, right. showing him as uh, for the first time kind of having this plan. Like he's never really had a master plan like this. And, it, you know, this is the start of, you know, two arcs where... I mean, we didn't know for a long time in the current arc, but two mm. arcs where he has this plan that he executes, um, to and they're incredibly epic and amazing. Um, but you know, we never got that before, so it's really cool to see that and to see that interaction with him and Reiner, and then him bursting out of out of the wall, you know, yeah. eating the head of the Tiber family. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that that was so satisfying, um, and, and and a very epic moment. A very, a very, very good moment for Aaron, in, in my opinion. Right. And then maybe it was a little confusing after that. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so so here's why I'm doubting that Aaron is actually going to do the rumbling. I think there's okay. there's several points where Aaron has, or at least I, I've been able to think, like off the top of my head, when I scrabbled down these notes, I was able to think off the top of my head of four instances in the story where Aaron is making himself out to be very much very obviously being like a bad guy, mm-hmm. like a villain, and right. so the first time is in the in the basement with Reiner and and Falco, when he when he tells mm-hmm. them he tells them, I'm the bad guy. I might just destroy the world, is one of the things mm-hmm. he says to them. Like, I, and I feel like in Attack on Titan, especially, it's such a weird thing for any character to say right out, I'm the bad guy. Like, yeah, like. There are right. no like. There's barely any straight up bad guys. There, there in that isn't a story. villain. There isn't a Frieza or you know a right. yeah. all, uh, all for one. You know it's, it's <laughs> yeah. not like that. Precisely, and 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 even even then, like also like most bad guys or like any good any well written bad guys doesn't think of themselves as a bad guy, except for maybe like yeah. the Joker. Yeah. I don't know, but you know. Um, <laughs> But like, like it's so I, I I don't buy that. I don't buy it when Aaron says I'm the bad guy. I might just destroy the world. It just feel it doesn't. I'm right there with you. Doesn't cling right with with mm-hmm. everything else that that we've experienced in this story. And then of course right after that he kills Wooly Tiber very spectacularly, very grand. Mm-hmm. You know, on the I can't stage. Can't wait to see that animated. Right. Yeah. It's like and it, like visually it's amazing, but also like when you think about it. Aaron doing that in front of the whole world. There's people from all around the world. There's reporters and ambassadors. Like every, he did that. I think on purpose for everyone to see how yeah. much of a threat he is to the world. Yeah. Uh, and I then uh, later on in the current arc, he you know in the in the famous uh, table scene. I, I think we've called it a couple of times before, at least on this this podcast with uh, Aaron, Mikasa, and Armin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and when you know he insults both of them, especially Mikasa, so like mm-hmm. he's he's mean to 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 her, and 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 then he beats Armin to a pulp. It's like mm-hmm. it. He goes overboard both verbally and and physically uh, on both of his best friends, and it's just like yeah. on, only to make himself look like a villain. Maybe like is that the reason why he did that? I maybe. Um, and yeah, then, I, I definitely thought that before. Yeah, and then the most recent thing out of the four things that I've found were is I mean the obvious like he announced to all Eldians everywhere in the world that he was gonna destroy the world, and obviously mm-hmm. that that's gonna that that message will spread to non Eldians too because they're gonna you know make a big fuzz about that. I mean naturally, mm-hmm. understandably so. So you know the whole world is gonna know that Aaron is gonna destroy them all, 
he could have not sent that message and that would have given him an upper hand. That would, then he would have had the element of surprise. Totally. But he did yeah. that for some reason. He did that. And I think mm -hmm. all of this points probably to the fact that what he's, what he's alluding to, what he's saying, isn't really what he's planning. Probably. Yeah. And I, but I mean, yeah, I, I and... have no idea what it's going to be, but it's probably not that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think, wh wh wherever he's going or whatever is for sure happening, I don't think it's going to end up in the entire world being right. trampled. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> or, or at least, I, I, don't, I don't even think Aaron's going to necessarily try to trample right. the entire world. I, I, I'm not exactly. sure what is going to happen, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, that I, I do feel like that would go against everything that Aaron practices and has been doing, especially when you consider the fact he saved Ymir in the in the paths realm he saved her you know ba freed her basically i know he had to free her for his own means, yeah but he did it so <laughs> he did it so like lovingly and caringly and you know, almost a, you know you've mm. been ha you've had this terrible burden for you know thousands of years or was it a thousand years i can't remember how many years like, like for so many years almost two thousand years but it's felt longer Almost two thousand years it's felt almost longer for her because in the paths realm or whatever it's called you know time time flows like almost infinitely slower you know it's like yeah uh. that's true so so anyway so just having that much compassion for somebody and then just coming around and being this ma malevolent yeah is, yeah is i don't know it, it it's almost it's a little too it it feels like it, it, it can't be the entire truth there but anyway maybe right. but maybe i'm reading into it wrong or or something but i i agree with your points those are very very good points Mm. But I, I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of at a loss though for like to to figure out what it, what on earth it could be that he that he's planning. I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I almost okay. This is so stupid. I almost thought I was like, okay, well, what if maybe he's going to the place where the Marleans learned how to beat the the Eldians? Like, well, no, no the, the Marleans didn't learn how to beat the Eldians. The Eldians beat themselves. Well, so basically, yeah. <laughs> Well, no, that's totally what it was. The 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 Eldians had this, their civil war, and then mm. the king, the king, uh, Fritz or whatever, was like, you yeah. know what? This is whack. We're evil. We're sinful. We gotta leave. Yeah. Um, we, True. And so they had their whole. Their exactly. Whole yeah. He. I mean, yeah. He he was responsible for ending that whole conflict for the time being, anyway. But. Mm -hmm. I think that if he hadn't done that the Eldian people would have collapsed eventually, like, pretty shortly anyway, because the, it was a civil war between they Eldians. Were killing, because they were killing themselves? Yeah. Like, you know, each mm. of the nine or eight, they, like, not, not counting the founder, like, the other eight titans were all in, at war with each other for power of the titans. Right. So so maybe it was less of a... So what... So are you saying it was less of a humane thing? You know, let's 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 punish ourselves for killing so many people and more of a survival thing no, I, th I th actually no i think it was mostly any way to save the okay. world i, I that, the way i see it that's anyway. what I, that's oh save the world you know oh. well, well you know to save everybody else you know huh. including themselves okay. too but you know but also to save the the others because i think the the Eldian people not only were they fighting within themselves but they were also fighting other tribes they were expanding D during during their civil wars, I thought they I thought they had stopped expanding to have the uh, to have their civil war. I thought, maybe, they, I thought they said that, but I, I could be wrong. But at the same time, they were also I think they were also mistreating the other like the the Marleans were still being yeah. uh, you know suppressed you know so it wasn't a fun well, they, time for other people anyway. No, no, it was no, it was not a fun. So time. I think he did save the other people, and that that was his main reason because of the the sins that right that like the horrible had, things they had done. Like their ancestors the and probably themselves too, the people that lived a hundred years prior, you know, to the main story. Yeah, a, a little uh, nice similarity that I noticed in the Marley arc. Uh, so there's the festival in like in in Liberia. There's a festival before the mm -hmm. before the whole play and the whole thing it starts with with Willie Tyber, mm -hmm. and so. The festival is lovely. I love that scene with Reiner and the four kids. Yeah. It's so so it's precious, good. so so cute. Uh, and there's there's this, there's like three panels that are like on top of each other, like going right after after another after the other, where Reiner uh, is buying 
foods like food from from like food stalls for, <laughs> for, for the children i do and love that <laughs> it's so it's so nice because i mean the, the kids are enjoying it, that so much and, and then you see reiner in the background as he's buying them the food he's kind of like on, on the first one his, his head is kind of like normal or is, yeah and, and then mm-hmm. on the next one it's like tilted down a little bit and he's then on, like on, slowly the, on the third down. one it's just hunched hunched almost down like he's face down almost you know <laughs> and, and it's like in that scene it's just comedic it's funny it's cute it's you know it's Mm -hmm. it's it's really nice you know like sure he's he's spending money on this on these kids but he he's enjoying it he he loves doing that uh and you know it's it's all it's all in good 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 fun but in the in uh chapter 100 i think uh yeah yeah in chapter 100 um when reiner is with aaron in the basement and aaron is talking about how they're all the same over the sea and inside the walls and about how Reiner has suffered, like he understands that. When Aaron is talking about all that, uh, we see three panels on top of each other of Reiner's head tilting down a step at a time through those three panels, like from the same angle and everything as as it was in the, on, on the festival before. I, I don't know if that was intentional. I, I like to think it was because it's like very similar, but obviously has a completely different meaning in this in this instance because now like it's <laughs> super serious super dark reiner is you know in a really really bad state of mind and but you know it's it's just like visually it's the same but it's com- has a completely different meaning i think is very very nice very nicely done yeah i, I didn't notice that but he yeah. said that was chapter 100 uh yeah chapter 100 is, is this like when he's with aaron and then i think it's chapter 98 is the festival right so i yeah, I remember. I remember the the festival part, but the right. Oh yeah. Well, anyway, we, we can keep going. I just I'll just look at it later on. <laughs> yeah. Compare. So oh yeah, here I got a question for you in chapter nine sure. in chapter ninety nine. Um, it's the first time we see Yelena, but she is dressed up as a man with a beard, or rather, you know, Marlene soldier with a helmet and a beard, mm-hmm. and. Yelena manages to trap Peek and Porco in that pit inside the house. Right. So my question to you is, why do you think she didn't, like, she could have easily, like, I don't know, thrown down some explosives or, you know, she could have killed them pretty easily from the position that she was in and, hmm. in, 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 like, respective to where they were. Why do you think she didn't kill them? I don't know. Because <laughs> <laughs> she very uh, easily could have. Yeah, she could have. Maybe, But maybe that would have caused, maybe that would have ruined the... Like, because they would have, they would have heard the explosion and, you know, things would have gone. They probably would have stopped something. So maybe mm. that would have ruined Aaron's, like, you know, grand entrance. That is actually a good, that, that, that is a good point. I had two other ideas for what it, for what could have been the reason. One, one of them being that, because obviously, you know, Zeke was in on this plan. Mm-hmm. Uh, so maybe Zeke, Zeke, obviously he didn't want to, f- want these people to be on the fight because that, that would have made the fight harder for Aaron. Mm-hmm. But maybe he also didn't want to kill them because, after all, both Porco and Peek are well. They're alien, but they're also friends with Zeke. Right. You know, they've yeah. spent a lot of time together. You know, fighting, training, totally. hanging out, just chilling together. Probably. You know, they they've had a lot. That's of... exactly right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah. That, that's that's one of my thoughts for why maybe he just he told Yelena like you know trap them there, but don't don't kill them. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that could be it. Could be that. Could be what you said. I think that's probably equally likely. Just, you know, because yeah. they, they wanted to be stealthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my third option, which I think, I, th- I believe in the least out of these things that we've uh, mentioned as possibilities, but mm-hmm. worth mentioning anyway, is that maybe it was Aaron who told her not to kill them because he needed, because he had seen the future and he knew that he needed Porco's Titan to eat the Warhammer. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that. I don't know. Although the although the the events like leading up to eating the warhammer, he seems like he seems like he was winging it. Mm. You know what I mean? Actually, yeah, actually that 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 is true. That's true. Yeah. I yeah. I, it, I, it makes I, you wonder how much of the future like he surely he's seen everything, but like how much can he process or I, I don't think he's seen he everything. Understand? Yeah, he probably hasn't seen. But he's seen he I mean he's seen quite a bit at the very least. Probably. But yeah, I uh, would think. 
I mean, anyway, sorry. Maybe that, 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 that's, that's done the discussion. For <laughs> no, no, but like, and, and yeah, you, you, you definitely actually, you, you managed to definitely prove me wrong there because it's true. Aaron at the time, he definitely does seem like he, he's figuring it out as he, as he goes. So yeah, yeah, you're right. Well, talk, talking about that part specifically real mm-hmm. quick. It's, yeah. it's very gruesome. Like, if you think yes. about it, mm-hmm. like, you know, he, he take, he takes the jaw and like, you know, crunch at the, the, the art, the crystal, the, uh, Mm. Warhammer Titan and she just like breaks into pieces and all this blood uh, just like gushes out of it. It's yeah. oh man. <laughs> like can you imagine that at an- oh animated man? Like yeah. that's gonna that's that's gonna be gruesome. Ooh. Yeah, I hope I hope it will be gruesome that they don't censor anything. Oh <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> but oh god, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Or I actually I can wait. If it's gonna be well made, I can wait. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> um yeah. Uh, and then uh, another thing from chapter 100, the very beginning of it, there's a, like a little bit of a flashback in time, no, or not a flashback to anything we'd seen, but it moves back in time a bit, uh, to a discussion between Magath and Willie, uh, and they're, they're like riding in a wagon, and they're having a discussion about, like they're planning out the speech and everything, like they're and making sure like security stuff and whatnot, and in that discussion, there's one point where they're talking about using all of the attendants of the show as bait because they, they have this feeling or they have this, well, they, 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 they feel like, you know, maybe they will, they will be attacked during this occasion, which they were right in assuming. Um, mm-hmm. And they're using all of the people there as baits. And Magath, the Marleyan, is the one who is, like, in, in this discussion between these two characters, the one who expresses concern over that, while Willie, Tiber the Eldian in this situation mm-hmm. expresses that he's fine with it because most of the casualties are going to be Eldians. And I think that that's very like, it's, it's like almost like it's flipped to the way that we were expecting things to be. But of, of course we know these two characters. So with these specific mm-hmm. characters, it kind of does make sense, but uh, I mean, yeah, it, it it's sense. interesting I though, you know? Yeah, it, it, it is interesting. But I, I think, I think the Eldians, especially like, you know, or the, the Royal, the royal Eldians, if you you know the Tiber family and and the Fritz family, they both have this whole thing where oh we are so evil and horrible we, we're we're better off dead but at least allow us to have some peace or, you know, they have that whole thing that they don't care if their people die because they're so horrible and to me, to mm-hmm. me like that mentality, is just go, goes against human nature because I believe anybody can change it's oh, not yeah. what your ancestors are like it's it's what you are like and what you change to be. And yeah, it has something to do with like how you're grown up, but as we see with Gabby, people your world can be changed. Your world, eyes can be open. Yeah. And so oh, and I, and that's why too. I kind of have and what Mag Magath too. <laughs> and I and I I so I, I take issue with with you know Tyra being so or Willie being so willing to you know well take issue to you. It's it's his character. I mean, it's it's interesting to read. But mm. like, you know, um I disagree with him uh, that letting people, his own people die because of the horrible things that happened in their past yeah. is okay. It's, it's just, you know, I strong disagreement with it, but not, not that I, you know, I can't stand this chapter because of that. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, but, I, but no, I, I totally, I totally agree I, with you. I think that mindset is not right. And, mm. and I, and, and to me, I think that's what that Aaron thinks that as well is that, you know, being willing to, sacrifice your own people because of that is ridiculous absolutely anyway. yeah then I, again then again he kills a, he kills a bunch of people and yeah he doing, so I, yeah. True that. <laughs> yeah so yeah. i don't know it's but yeah th- this is another one of those scenes that points where magath very like even before the current arc showed several instances of being you know accepting of aliens and being you know to some level caring of of aliens yeah. Uh, which yeah. is very, very nice. And Willie Tiber knew, he knew, or at least was very, felt very sure that by doing this speech, he was putting a target on, on his head, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but he also knew that he had to do it. He like, he had to do it uh, in order for the world to listen to his message. Like he, yeah. he, no one else could have done it unless it was him, you know? Um, I would say it was shocking to find out or I think I think I had realized this before, but just like you know, re-realizing this <laughs> uh-huh. is, uh, you know, the Tiber family basically had control, more or less. They you know, they were holding the mm. the steer of the boat, 
yeah. of the Mar- of the country of Marley. Precisely. Um, it, mm-hmm. It's it, you know it's really it was really fascinating to to you know, read that again. It's like wow, the, they're controlled by aliens. Technically, it's yeah, it's wow. weird. <laughs> you know, mm. his own people were oppressed, but it's all because they want to. You know, they feel like they're they're not worthy of salvation for their past sins or whatever. But exactly. Anyway, it's yeah, yeah, it's it's fascinating. Yeah, and and what I, what I was gonna get to is that um, like you know, Willie Tiber chose to hold his speech because he knew that no one would listen unless he delivered it mm-hmm. himself, and I think that echoes very beautifully with uh, Aaron Smith's final assault on the Beast Titan, oh. where in which he knew that he wouldn't be able to get all all of the scouts to to go against the Beast unless he led them. In order for it to work he knew that that was how it had had to happen and obviously both ended mm-hmm. up dying but their <laughs> yeah. their their plans were you know they were they worked yeah <laughs> uh another I, I i totally agree with that another parallel i found found this and this will go into like my i'll, I'll this is kind of like my one of my final points that i wanted to make uh-huh. in this discussion oh. not that we have to end it but just just my <laughs> my point uh anyway uh-huh. willie you know kind of putting himself out there and being like the you know target enemy number one and people can rally be behind him and towards him and you know be the the centerpiece of you know the war if you will mm. it reminds me if if this is what aaron's doing it reminds me of aaron like is ah. is aaron being you know the one where everyone kind of comes together and you know he acts as the villain if you so to speak and People gather around him to um, to fight, and they come together in that sense. Mm. Um, and that's kind of like what Willie did, you know, a little different because they were rallying with him instead of against him. But oh, yeah. I think that kind of has a parallel. True. But <laughs> the, re- the reason why I bring that up is because Willie says something that foreshadows a couple of characters and their um, desires so he said, I think it's during his speech, he says, I wish for the extinction of all Eldians. And it shows, the next panel shows Zeke. Yes. And we know that was, that was Zeke's moment. That was Zeke's exactly. moment. Exactly. And then he says, but I do not, <laughs> I do not wish to die. And, he, and in the next panel, he says, because I was born into this world. And that, mm. you know, and it's like super close up on Aaron because right. that is Aaron's like motto. That is a geniusly like well composed page. Like that, because it's all the same page, right? Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's the same page. Right. Yeah. And, and at the same time, we're all you know, because we're really, all you know, that's that's interesting. You know, okay, uh, la di da. You know, we don't really understand <laughs> Zeke's motives all all too well. Yeah. Oh yeah, we had no idea about Zeke's plan and at, at this moment. Right. Yeah. But where we are now and understanding like that's what Zeke motives was. That's what Aaron motives still was. Mm-hmm. It it just it kind of just blows my mind. Just like wow, yeah. he <laughs> foreshadowed that. Yeah. And uh, and so that's why I feel like Willie kind of is parallel to Aaron in some way because Aaron kind of wishes the same thing to happen not 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 that like you know he wants the extinction of Eldians although maybe maybe his end goal is to get rid of the Titan power I'm not sure but Mm. definitely like because I was born in this world like that that you know resonates with both of them so in some way I think there is um a a comparison to be made between the two yeah yeah because yeah there's similarities but they're also in other ways, they're complete opposites, and it's yeah, it's mm-hmm. but it's definitely definitely interesting, and and yeah. yeah, and I agree that page is like oh yeah, so it, it's good. Pro- it's probably my favorite page of reading the Marley. <laughs> I mean, there's so many, there's so many ones, but that was probably my favorite. Chapter one hundred is so good. Like, it is, it is. Oh, <laughs> it's gosh. got so much good, great it'd stuff. It'd probably be my it'd probably be my favorite chapter if it wasn't for some of the chapters that we've read, or yeah, some of the chapters that we've read in our discussion. Just Ooh. Be- oh yeah. Because 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 those you know mind blowing reveals and yeah there have been some you know, great stuff lately yeah right. <laughs> but anyway yeah no hundred hundred is excellent a mm-hmm. great a great one hundredth chapter precisely yeah it's By very far. it's definitely worthy of being chapter one hundred <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah and then uh, the fight during the fight with between Aaron and the Warhammer and like and the, everything you know becomes crazy I think it's not like really really great fight like action sequence like all around it's got titan action it's got you know human you know soldier fighting like it's got like so so much going on it's all really really well made uh and something that i think is really nice to see like aaron is so on top of it 
when this fight, <laughs> yeah. when this fight with, with, like with, yeah. with the Warhammer starts, he punches the Warhammer before it's even finished <laughs> forming. You know, it's like oh, that's man. how on top of it he is. Like he's he's on. He's, he's on so it. he's so grown up. He's so changed. Yeah. Like, oh man, it's it's awesome. He even like during his fight, he transforms into his Titan form three times in one yeah. fight. Like, you know, full what? size, full size Titan action, uh, all, all all three times, full full Titan. And <laughs> and he figured out where the real Warhammer Titan was. Right. Like you know, I you normally that would have been like someone else, like you know maybe Hans or or Erwin or Armin <laughs> would have been like Aaron, it's in the ground. Like, oh. But but yeah. he but he's he's so much he his thinking is so much better. He yeah, oh, he's just so, he's grown up so much. He really has. He's, I mean, I'm so proud of him. Yet he does still claim that he's the same as he's true. always been. <laughs> I mean, that's that's true as well, and he's he's uh, rec- he's reckless a, a, as well. But but he has he's got grown. a plan. Yeah, he's he's got a plan. Mm-hmm. And it's very nice, very nice. And and also during this fight, uh, there's a moment where Porco is being attacked by the Paradisians, like coming to Adam with ODM gear, and he's like, and, and, and like he he is surprised. Like why why they would attack him? Like it's like he's too prideful to understand why humans would attack, like would dare attack a titan like him. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I mean that that very much like is in character for him because he is very much like he's very cocky and stuff. But yeah, but yeah, and also and obviously he hasn't fought anyone with ODM gear before. He hasn't fought the Paradisians. So true. So moving ahead a little, little bit after the mo- the major fighting is over. Um, Obviously, Sasha gets shot by Gabby on the airship, and right, <laughs> yeah, the tears. She was so beautiful. She, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like he, he, like Isayama did not like hold back on. I think on her precious smile, like there, or like her just face. Like she was for some reason she just looked more beautiful than ever before uh-huh. in 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 this in the in her like few chapters that she was there before she died. Right. And it was just like, oh my gosh, she's gone, the precious angel. Hmm. But, that, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, so what I was going to... So right after Gabby shoots her, like right after, uh, uh, Gabby takes aim at Jean. Like, I guess it makes sense, you know, she takes aim at someone else that that's right there. So she takes aim at Jean because she wants to kill all the island devils. So she takes aim at Jean, and Jean also, I mean, he, he's furious. He's like, and, and like emotional and, you know, but he surprised. And, you know, he's got so much... You know, things going through him right now and he and he takes aim at gabby with his gun and they both shoot at each other but last second falco shoves gabby to the side causing both of them to miss the other like miss each other mm-hmm. which and I, I don't know I, I thought i thought that was like an interesting way to think of it like falco potentially saved both gabby's and john's lives right there hmm uh because he he he, he shoved gabby to the side to make it so that she wasn't in Jean's line of fire and she and, and also because he did that Gabby like right as she fired like she kind of like lost control of her aiming I guess and and because you can see how the bullets fly right to the side of mm-hmm. uh, Jean's head and right to the side of like where uh, Gabby is like they they would have probably killed each other uh, if Ga- or if Falco hadn't intervened right and I have another question for you sure so Sasha's final word was meat <laughs> do you think that's touching or do you think that's goofy? So I, I, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like he tries to play it off as touching, <laughs> but it's just so goofy. Yeah, like, it, mm. <laughs> I don't know. It, did, it, didn't, it didn't hit me right. Mm, yeah. And not that I wanted her to be like, oh, Connie, or something, something like that. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that kind of, that may be go against her character, but uh-huh. I think it shows Almost, it almost shows for Isayama that he's always considered her kind of a, well, not always. He had, he had, they, she had like an arc where she had some care development. But at the beginning, like, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but he had planned on her dying, right? But the fans liked her so much that he kept her in. I think so. Yeah, I think in the like the the clash clash of the titans arc, I think maybe she would have died. But, um, but yeah, I, 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 I'm pretty sure that's the case. Yeah. So I, I I don't know like so maybe he just felt like okay well people like her for the jokes and the memes so we'll just keep we'll keep that going I don't yeah. know I I'm not sure what he was going for I, I guess you could say it's on point but mm. it just it felt it felt a little a little too ear deaf tone deaf in my 
opinion. Yeah, and I, I agree with you completely on that. Like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it felt like e even even in her dying moment, she still had to be the comic relief character, which, uh, I don't know. I, I kind of wish there had been something yeah. because it, it did a little bit bring me out of the moment. I think I could have, I th that scene could have been much more, like, had much more weight and been much more emotional for me if yeah. she had said something else. Uh, I agree. I don't know what and, it would have been, and, but yeah. Well, yeah, but but she also, well, her family, like, why not mention her family? Her family plays a big role. Why not, True. you know, maybe say something about that? I think that would have been, that would have been impactful. Right. Yeah. Um, she had like brought up her dad or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. dude, I and like then, that. And it kind of make it kind of makes it worse that it well, I, well to add insult to injury, like you know, Aaron's like, "What was her last word?" Or someone someone asked that, and uh, Aaron they does, say yeah. meat. Yeah, yeah, it was Aaron. Then he's like, starts crying, meat. And it's like, look, I get it. Like, <laughs> I'm crying too because that's so pathetic. That's so goofy. <laughs> I I understand that was like you know important to Sasha, and you have that flashback with her mm -hmm. holding the meat, but it just. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It just it doesn't work. You don't. Anyway, I don't. I don't mean to keep ragging on. Her. <laughs> yeah. But hey, at least she had a pretty face as she was sniping those people. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, yeah. She. I, I mean, she. I. I do think like having her die there. I think ultimately was a good thing for the story because it led to some very sure. good things like in the current arc yeah. with her family, with Nicolo, uh, with uh, Kaya. You know. Mm -hmm. her her death has been important yeah and, and you know so i think i don't think it was meaningless right no for sure like for for the sake of the story it's it has made the story good in 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 several scenes um mm -hmm. but like right in the moment when it was happening it could have probably been executed a little better at least according to us <laughs> yeah according here, to our expertise here on titan tea time we do not think she should have should have said meat <laughs> Unless Steven thinks uh, that she should have said meat. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I no knowing Steven, I don't. I don't think he would have been too. Yeah. Bit either. But... Right. Yeah. No, I think so. Yeah. I, I also think so. Ah, uh, but yeah. And then I guess moving on to the final chapter of the Marley arc. At least I think it's considered the Marley arc. At least it is in like the last chapter of volume uh, twenty six, the chapter one hundred and six, um, which is technically after. They leave Marley, but whatever. We'll we'll talk about that one a little bit. I took a few notes, uh, and that's in that chapter. There's uh, there's a scene with Aaron, Mikasa, and Armin. Obviously, this is a flashback scene, because most of this chapter is, uh, but uh, or at least a lot of it is, uh, with Aaron, Mikasa, and Armin, and they're uh, they're they're at like the shooting range, and they're also talking about like what to like what their plans should be and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in that scene, uh, I think through, through through their conversations, it's pretty clear that Aaron wants to at least cause a partial rumbling, like you know, not 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 necessarily to destroy the whole world, but to destroy like just enemies, uh, major military bases, and stuff like that. Uh, which was also like something that was discussed, I think, at a later point as well. Um, like at least some kind of rumbling, like maybe not a full rumbling, but at least a partial rumbling. Is hinted, or it's, yeah. it's pretty clear from what Aaron says in that scene that he wants to do something like that, because he knows they need they need time in order for the the island to survive, and that mm -hmm. would that would do that. If he's alluding to wanting to do a partial rumbling, or if he's alluding to wanting to do a full rumbling, I mean, I, I don't know exactly because it's not clear from that one scene, like in itself. Of course, I I still probably don't think he wants to do the full rumbling, like despite everything that he's said and done. But I mean, I don't know. And then uh, at the very end of this chapter, to finish the Marley arc off, or, well, again, if this is even considered the Marley arc, mm -hmm. it ends with Aaron's words, like, as he's uh, looking at himself in the mirror, and he says, if we don't win, we die. If we win, we live. If we don't fight, we can't win. And then he says, fight, fight. Uh... And but like the first part there, it's I think I think it's something Mikasa said. Maybe not exactly those words, but at least something very similar to it. Mikasa said to rally up the the training cadet people in the trust arc after Aaron had presumably died. I think Mikasa said something similar to that, like very similar to it. 
Yeah, well, well, you know, and Mikasa's the one like who kind of starts saying it in this one. She says, "If you lose, you die. If you win, you live." And she's holding the scarf. Yeah, right, right, right. So yeah, so she starts saying that, and then Aaron finishes it. So yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure that's something Mikasa did say in the Trost arc, like at the beginning of the story. What maybe it's a combination of what Mikasa said, and then maybe something similar to what Aaron told her when they were younger and you know those guys kidnapped her and you know oh, yeah. kind of something awoken oh something, yeah something similar along those lines what Aaron said to her there was at least along those lines like maybe not this exact type of of uh, right, thing right. but but definitely like same kind of meaning for sure mhm yeah <laughs> and i think this moment here um you know where in the translation it says and thus they begin walking on their separate paths right i think it says it to, to me that implies from the from this moment on like you know all well particularly aaron um is separated from mikasa and armin for a while because yeah um aaron has to aaron re, you know he's seen the future or some sort of future that he knows it has to get done and you know i guess he knows the steps that need to be taken mm. um and I think he's kind of like trying to pump himself up, if it were like like motivate himself. Yeah. Um, and you know, and prepare for what has to be done. And and we see, I don't, I I think it's the it's one of the next chapters where Hanj comes in and I ask him what he's thinking, and he kind of has like a he kind of like a snaps on her. Yeah. And I think there you can, you can see like the weight. He feels the weight of the world on his shoulders, and he he knows what has to be done and. And you know he's he, he's probably like freaking out if he can do it or not. But oh, he and and to... he's he's desperate too because desperate. It's, yeah, it's the chapter after this. I, I'm pretty sure where Hanji comes to him there and talks to him through the bars and and uh, obviously like they disagree and mm-hmm. and yeah as you said like then Aaron snaps and he like grabs Hanji's collar and he's like if you if, if you know it like a different way then say it you know he he's yeah. he's desperate to find a different way because the way that he that the only way he knows, presumably, is to kill everyone outside of parody. And he doesn't want to do that. Man, I'm so torn. Like, sometimes I... I know. Sometimes I think I that he actually is going to do it, but sometimes I don't mm-hmm. think, ah, man. <laughs> well, yeah. Maybe maybe he's... But maybe maybe he's like... I think I mentioned this in one of the podcasts before, is maybe he's thinking, like, he has to be the villain, that he has to die, yeah. potentially. That he has to kind of, like, sacrifice himself. Maybe that's something that he's freaking out about or mm. he doesn't know that he can do like he he maybe he doesn't know that he can get the whole world to rally against him and that's why he feels so desperate to find another way maybe um i mean i mean that's a that's a big task and uh, oh you know, for sure for sure i mean even even to just cause the rumbling that's i mean i i'm sure he was like you know freaking out like yeah how, how that was gonna happen anyway <laughs> you know it, it's it's hard to say it's hard to say right now but i do Oof. think like you know this is the this is a part where he's, you know, you know, trying, trying to motivate himself, and you know, telling himself to get to work. I guess. Yeah, definitely. And unless you have something, I I have one final discussion topic. Uh, unless you have anything else. Um, I'll just, I'll just say something that's super minor. I. Yes. It was it was great to see everyone like have their reveals and come back and it was so mm. cool. You know, Levi was great. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, they they were all great, um, and it, it felt satisfying and and Mikasa's Mikasa reveal felt satisfying as well <laughs> she kind of felt like this you know the wife who wants their <laughs> husband to come back home yeah, their yeah. Chi- your children miss you come back home right <laughs> um but uh ever you know ever since the end of the Shigan uh, uh return to the Shigantina arc or you know right before the Marley arc right and we've mentioned this time and time again in in, in the podcast <laughs> Mikasa hasn't been quite as great of a character as she has before. She hasn't been as prevalent. And she's she's becoming more so now, but you know, where where is where is that like that big growth, that that big payoff where we see something? And I, I think like the seeds are being planted. Like you see her holding the scarf there and you know, the scarf's kind of playing a part. And you met you brought up the table scene, the infamous table scene. <laughs> yeah. You know, so you know, surely something's going down there and 
you know, there's still hints of Aaron. You know, he sees the sees the past where he passes the scarf on to Mikasa. Like, there's hints there, but I, I I'm getting impatient. <laughs> like, <laughs> I really, yeah. Mikasa. I, I don't know if I can call her my favorite character. Maybe maybe has Aaron always? I think Aaron now is my favorite character, but um, before I think it was Mikasa. But you know, it she's just not as good as she used. I still love her, but <laughs> it's not as not as um, interesting like character development wise. And and I I know I really wish I really hope that there is some sort of payoff there. And I again, we say this time and time again. You know, in in Isayama we trust, but <laughs> I. I don't know. Yeah. It's it's just been it's been so long since we have a standout moment with her that yeah. was an action. Honestly, um, yeah, yeah, and I, and I know you. I I feel like you feel the same way. Yeah, I mean, I started losing interest in Mikasa even earlier than you did, probably. Like you said, you started Fair. losing interest in her after the return to Shiganshin arc. I think I started losing interest in her like the female Titan arc. Oh wow! Like, or maybe after it, but I mean, I don't know. Uh, I mean, her 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 highlights were in the Trost arc, when Aaron was dead. Yeah. That was when she was good. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that that's what I think, because that that's when she actually had character growth. Like she, after Aaron yeah. died, she 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 was able to pretty almost be a leader. She rallied up the the recruits, and she she actually mm-hmm. did some very important stuff to help out there. Not only by killing titans, but also by you know motivating the trainees, and you know she she was really really good in the trust arc. I mean, yeah, I, I agree. Like the trust has her best moment, but she but she still had moments like like some really good moments like she, mm, you know yeah. when the kid when they kidnapped Aaron, you know she had like the death stare and Barrett told about that. <laughs> you could see you could see just like so much character and so much ha- well the hatred like, seething through her. Yeah, you know, yeah, you see yeah. that. And I really like that, and then she had that. In, in in season two, and not so much in the manga, if I understand, she had that moment where she almost practically confessed to Aaron um, her feelings. Right. Yeah. Right. And then and then you know, Aaron Aaron just kind of breathes in. <laughs> it's, it's really kind of comedic, but he kind of just breathes in and kind of <laughs> turns around. And it's like, no, I don't want to hear it right now. <laughs> and then uh, he punches a titan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but but I I love that moment. That was such a good moment for her. Yeah. So. Yeah. I feel like she's had she had moments, maybe not as agree. I agree, not as grand as the Trossa, but she's had moments. But now we're at this point where it's it's just not there anymore. And besides some action, and there there's like little hints of it. And you know I've you know I've been I've been advocating for it, but yeah, I don't know, the more the more I think about it, and the more I lament about it, I I, I don't know. I'm I'm my, my hope is like kind of dwindling, but. <laughs> I as we've seen like he's a masterful foreshadower sim, you know yeah. there's always symbolism happening um so I I'm sure these seeds that we've mentioned before with her with the scarf and um the girl I can't remember her name at the top of my head Louise Louise you know the number one Mikasa fan girl yeah you know the, that that whole thing I think there will be will be I, I do think there'll be payoff. I'm I'm just I'm getting very impatient. Absolutely, <laughs> and you know we're we're talking about like he's he, him having planted seeds, and we have picked up on a couple of things that definitely could be that. But I'm also thinking, you know, there's probably some seeds he's sown out that we just we haven't even picked up That's on. Fair. You know, things that we will yeah. look back at later and be like, oh my god, he did that, <laughs> and like you know, because there was such, a lot of those things have been like for like for example, like we talked about the Marley arc today and. Uh, yeah, we have noticed things that maybe we didn't realize the first time we read it, mm-hmm. uh, because of because we have read later parts of the story by now, and you know, right, a lot of stuff like that. Very nice. I, uh, I I completely, completely agree, and I hope with every fiber of my being that'll be the case, um, with her and 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 with most most of these characters. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. And so my last question that I wanted to pose here today. Sure. Is related, uh, I think, I guess, both to the Marley arc and to the current arc. But it is, so, and, and I, I guess I have a few vague ideas of, of the, the answer to this, but I mean, I don't know anything for, for, for a fact, so I wanted to hear what your thoughts. Basically, we know that Aaron and Zeke met up at least once uh, at, the oh, ho- yeah. at the hospital in Marley, right? Mm-hmm. And 
they could have touched then and there. Aaron was the founding <laughs> Titan. Zeke is a Titan with royal blood. They could have touched right then and there. And, you know, because from Zeke's point of view, right, uh, uh, Aaron was on his side. Aaron wanted the same thing as Zeke. So that's so from Zeke's point of view, it's like, yeah, what's the, what, what's the reason to not do it then and there? You know, and obviously, from Aaron's point of view, I understand it because he needed to be on the island to lead the Wall Titans. Mm-hmm. But Zeke didn't know any of that. And he assumed Aaron was on his side. So why, from Zeke's point of view, why why wouldn't they have done it there? Because I think, I don't remember if it's right in, in the Marley arc or if it's in a flashback during the current arc. But at some point, there's the, it, they, they go back to that scene. I think it's in a flashback. And Zeke says, like, oh, it would be premature for us to touch now or something like that. And I'm like, why? Why would that be oh, premature? Really? Um, so it's like, so yeah, mm. so yeah. Well, what, what, you, you, have to, you have to share that point because that mm. kind of, that might tear down what I was, what I was thinking. What, what, um, what were you thinking? So I don't know if I've mentioned this podcast or I mentioned in the chat. Uh, real quick, I, I, I think you said this, but it's just funny that they were on the, the blimp together. The Zeppelin or whatever. That that too. Yeah, they were at the same place. <laughs> you know, there they were as just well. right right next to each other. Right. They could have they could have touched then and uh-huh. you know, whatever. Um so one could be that, that Zeke wanted to be with the the Colossal Titans when they when they when he did the rubbling. Oh no. Why Wait, would Zeke he didn't want to do the that, rubbling? Though. Oh he didn't want to do the rubbling. He yeah. wanted No, exactly. He wanted just to eradicate. So never never mind. So Scratch that, but that's, uh-huh. that actually was my original one. That was just something that just popped in my head. I see. Okay, good. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> my, what was your so thought? My ri- so my original one, sorry, uh-huh. um, it, it is that he's very he very much wanted Aaron to see his way. Like he he kind of knew that Aaron was going to betray him. If you remember, he he in in the path realm he pretended that he was chained up, right. but in reality he wasn't. Yeah. Um, and he was trying to make Aaron see his way. And and even even when he chained Aaron up, he was still trying to convince Aaron that his way was the right way. Right. I don't I don't know if he would have done anything until Aaron like was convinced potentially. Maybe not. I I, mm. I can't I can't remember the conversation what you know, word for word, but it it did it, it gave off that vibe if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. So potentially he knew that Aaron did not see the same way as him, and either Aaron said, "Okay, we well, we I I'm not gonna do it until we get to back to par- Paradise. Like, no touching until we get back." <laughs> oh, you! Um, some weird couple thing going on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. But a- a- another possibility, which might, which would probably be more uh, likely for Zeke is that Zeke, again, wanted to take the time to co- to convince Aaron, like make sure Aaron was ready. And maybe that is why he said it's not time yet or or this is not the right place or, or something like that. Right, right. I, I don't know, but, but there's still, it, d- it doesn't quite make all the way sense. Like why does it matter that you need Aaron other than your, you know, ridiculous daddy issues and your... right. But we have, we, we did, good, I think, good big brother. through the paths chapters, uh, like, mm-hmm. by those chapters, I think we learned, we, we got a better understanding of Zeke as a character, and we learned that, yeah. for him, Aaron is very important to him because they had the same father. Now, he doesn't know yet that they had two completely different experiences with Grisha, but mm, yeah, that's from true. his point of view, like, he, yeah, that's it, a good point. It's a very important thing for him, like very important, uh, apparently. Um, well, because well, yeah, yeah, I I think it's because he he thinks that Aaron is brainwashed and that he has to you know un unbrainwash him mm-hmm. and you know, open up his eyes to what needs to happen. Yeah. And he feels like the you know their father was the cause of all that. You know, mm-hmm. he father caused me pain, so he must be causing you pain too. Right. And then obviously his eyes are opened, and um, he has, you know, he has closure in that sense. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, I can see that kind of being a, a driving point um, for Zeke, you know, since it's so important to him, um, and maybe that's why he wanted to wait. Mm. Uh, the the other cynical side of me is that it's not very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> to have them just touch on the Zeppelin. Well, yeah. It's much more interesting to have like, the world falling apart and having them like run toward each other 
and then Aaron gets his head blown off and he catches the head. <laughs> uh, That's lovely. Uh, like I love like there's just so many times where like Zeke is playing baseball and he even does it with Aaron's head. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's true. Uh, he, yeah. Uh, what what a what a baseball otaku. Yeah, is. yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, that's a that's a very interesting question. Do you have, do you have your own? Uh, well, actually, theories? so my my idea was kind of similar to one of yours. It's that well, and and because because I just haven't been able to think of anything, uh, like else. It's basically that Aaron, like they had a conversation at the hospital. And I'm sure we didn't see that entire conversation, uh, mm-hmm. but I'm sure that, or at least the, I think that when they talked at the, at the hospital in Marley. And they were planning out how how to get things done. I think Aaron, either Aaron just gave Zeke the ultimatum: "I want to be in Shiganshina when we do this," for whatever reason. Like maybe it's like mm-hmm. maybe maybe he made it out to seem like a uh, like a sentimental reason. Like I want to be at my okay. hometown oh. when we end this, or something like that. Maybe he made it out okay. that way, or. Or and, and and like and Zeke agreed agreed to it because he 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 wants to be you know on Aaron's good side you know they're yeah. brothers you know I want to be a good big brother right exactly I so I think that's one thing that kind of makes sense and the other one which also is kind of similar I guess or or it was kind of similar to one of your things is that Zeke understood that Aaron wasn't actually with him like this early on I mean we know that later on he understood. That Z or that that Aaron wasn't completely with him because of you know he 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 fake chained himself up in the in the paths, so maybe mm-hmm. he even at this point knew this. Yeah, I could see that. And and since he already knew that, he knew that he also he wanted to give Aaron more time to understand what Zeke knew as the truth or what Zeke knew as the right solution. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Something like that. Although, out of those two ideas that I post, I think the one that, like, the first one, I think, makes more sense about Aaron basically giving Zeke the ultimatum that we're going to touch in Shiganshina. That's the, like, end, end of discussion, kind of. And that Zeke just accepted that because he wanted to be a good big brother. Although, yeah. as far as reasons go, that isn't the strongest one that, I mean, I, I you know, I don't know. I wish there was something else, kind of. And actually... Anyone listening to this, if you have an, an idea, a, a theory for why you think they didn't touch before Shiganshina, please share it in the comments because I, like, this is one of the major things that's been kind of on my mind and that's kind of been bugging me about this story. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyone with uh, cool ideas, please share them. I agree. I think if I had a handful of questions, I won't say one, <laughs> but if I had a handful of questions to ask Isayama, that would definitely be one of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um <laughs> if if it never gets like you know fully resolved in the manga, I'd be like, mm-hmm. why? <laughs> right. Why? Why? Did, why? What was the reasoning behind this? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, yeah, I would love to hear about other people's thoughts, and maybe maybe they agree with you, maybe they agree with us, or maybe they disagree in some ways. I'd love who to knows? Hear that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that as well. maybe they think we're total idiots coming up with these ideas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I who knows? Be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, um, do you have anything else you would like to talk about before we close this off? Because otherwise, I think we can do that. I just want to say that it was a real treat to read the Marley arc again. Oh, yes. Um, I, I highly recommend uh, maybe even rereading the whole series since oh, we've totally. got a, a, a month until the next chapter. Um, you know, <laughs> I've been thinking of maybe watching the mon- uh, the anime again, but nice. I don't know. Like, maybe I want to wait until the until season four is like confirmed and whatnot. <laughs> well, well, I mean, you know, when oh, yeah. that's coming. but anyway, but reading the Marley arc, it does help you understand the, the current arc and the characters a little better. I, I, I feel, especially Definitely. if you're like me and you haven't been reading chapter for chapter for a while, you, you know, you've, you had to been, you had to binge through some things. So mm-hmm. I, I recommend that. Oh yes. And it's just such a good, arc (laughs) it's always a treat like uh, like i said chapter 100 Ah, like one of my favorites yeah (laughs) it's great so but yeah thank you so much for listening and if you're interested in talking 
with us about Attack on Titan, there's links in the description to our Discord servers. We have one Discord server that's specifically for Titan Tea Time, and we talk about you know all things Attack on Titan in there. We also have a link to uh, another Discord server, which is more for our podcast network, if you want to join that one. But if you, if you want to talk about Attack on Titan with us, join the Attack on Titan server. I'm looking forward to seeing that one grow. And we will talk about chapter 129 next month. Ying! Because we will have a chapter, a new chapter to talk about. Woohoo! And maybe even two? Maybe two! Or maybe you just one double length one or something. Like, either way, fingers crossed. <laughs> okay. And thank you again for listening. See you next month. Bye-bye. Bye bye! Bye!